I think we should be live. Let me know if the audio is okay. It's not like clipping or doing anything weird like that. As long as you can hear us well, then uh, we're going to be doing a live stream for overclocking the new video cards today. I've got a pile of them. I'm actually, I haven't, these three I have not overclocked yet. So these are all 3080s. And uh, we are going to, we'll take a, a poll from chat to see what people want me to start with. But let me just check on chat first, see if people say it looks good. And then I'm going to tweet out that we're live. For people who catch this after the fact, if you see comments uh, below the video and it's obviously an upload, then it is archived. But right now, we're live. But when you're watching it, it might not be live. But right now, it is. I figure that one out. Uh, OK, what was people saying? Audio is good. OK, thank you very much for that confirmation. I always like to make sure we're good there before getting going. Let me tweet out that we're going live. Uh, OK, we are about to go live overclocking partner model RTX 3080s. Or, no, we're not about to go live. We are technically live. We are live. OK, good enough. All right, so the cards we have today. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out, there's, there's like, I was just realizing like, oh, I could put Amazon links in the description to these. And then I realized there's no point because they're all gone. Uh, so anyway, let me, let me open up like a, the video player window and see what chat is saying. What I want to know from you is uh, which one do we start with? I'll, I'll kind of gauge the chat roughly here and try and figure out what everyone is generally voting for. So uh, we have the Gigabyte Eagle. We have the EVGA, make sure that's the right one, uh, FTW3. Well, EVGA loses for um, stand-up ability. Unfortunately, that is the most critical aspect of any review. But EVGA FTW3, the one I have socketed right now just for video out, is a, uh, an Asus top. OK, now I'm going to look at chat. It's already exploding. I don't think I'm going to really. I'm just going to kind of look at it, zoomed out, and try and get a gauge. This is actually impossible. I'm seeing, I'm basically, I see some gigabyte questions, but I'm almost exclusively seeing Asus and EVGA. So I wish I had a coin or a die I could roll. Random number generator. Let's generate a number between 0. Is it going to be 0 and 2? Is it between, or is it? OK. All right, I'm going to generate a number, 1 or 2. And if it's 1, we'll do the tough. And if it's 2, we'll do the FTW3. So chat has basically ruled out the eagle. I saw a few of the requests, but most people wanted one of these other two. So let's click Generate. Actually, I forgot which ones I assigned. 1 is tough, 2 is FTW3. Generate. 1. Well, that's convenient. OK, I, don't, I think I need to install drivers still. So the tough came out. We're going to start with that one. What I'm going to do is overclock these with just their stock coolers. This is not a review. I am going to be working on the reviews with full in-depth thermals and all that stuff. But all of the, the thermal analysis will have to take place in our controlled benches. It's a very uh, lengthy process. But what we're going to do is sort of bin these cards in a sense in that we're just going to try and figure out which ones produce the better uh, clocks because this weekend I'm going to be working with Joe Staponzi, aka Bearded Hardware, and we're going to want to start with the card that's doing the best. Uh, now, one quick thing I have some, some of these I have special V BIOSes for and some I don't, but we're just going to use, at least as of right now, the production V BIOSes that are on there. All right. Uh, oh, that's kind of funny, Super Chats. Let me read a couple of these as we get started. There's, there's one at the bottom I want to get to quickly because it's amusing. Uh, first one was from MD, $10. Does everyone else laugh out loud when Jay has to read the NZXT warranty info in his ads? Quote, and RAM overclocking. I haven't actually seen those, but sorry for complicating things, Jay. Uh, VC Jester, $5. Can we get B-roll of your hair? I think the closest thing we have to that is our old EVGA CLC360 ad, uh, where we said it had a special mounting kit. Uh, Demony BS, I think $10. Have some funds. Thank you. Have some gratitude. Uh, Duck Vision, $5. Steve, you're so dreamy. No, no, you're just, you just like me for the video cards in front of me right now. 
Uh, Rick Linville, $10. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to read two more and then we'll get started. Jonathan Sitoris, $5. Have some of the money I was going to sp Oh, <laughs> there's more. Have some of the money I was going to spend on a 3080. That's actually much sadder. Sadly, as I am not a bot, I did not get one. Well, you should work on that. There's uh, probably bot training classes where you too can learn to become a video card scalper and uh, make your millions. I'm pretty sure the sale will not go through, but I don't know if anyone else caught it. Uh, earlier I saw a 3080 listed on eBay for $12,000 with 37 bids, and someone else told me they saw one for $70,000 that sold. I am 100% positive that at least the second one will not actually sell for that price, but I guess bidding it up to a point where it can't sell is good because that's going to fight the scalpers a bit. And the last one I'll read before we get going. Electricity machine, $5. We can hear you and see you. Uh, glad I could tune into a live stream when it's happening this go around. Yes, thank you for uh, for tuning in. I thought there was another one I saw. Oh, yeah, okay, here it is. Uh, two more. So, unarmed206 says, did you see NVIDIA sell out in one second earlier and start with the FTW3? I did see that. Uh, I was watching it trying to grab another card when it went up, and it was crazy. And then this one, Christian Manzanedo says, uh, I'm stuck at the part of the overclocking guide where you get the card. A lot of people are, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to just do a, a DDU here, and we will uh, get the driver installed and going, and we'll do some 3D Mark Port Royal, I think, overclocking. All right. So uh, this stream is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly. They're going to be the sponsor for this one. We've got Thermal Grizzly's Thermal Paste under the CPU uh, cooler right now, which is an Arctic liquid freezer. And I'm using Cryonaut for that. We've got links to them in the description below if you're interested in uh, high quality thermal paste. This is particularly good for liquid nitrogen overclocking, which we're going to be doing this weekend with Joe once Joe gets in. But we're starting with the air-cooled stuff today to, to kind of start it how most people will be using their devices. Let's clean and restart and then install the drivers. OK. Uh, I'm just checking on chat. Xdev says there is an overclocking guide. That's ten. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. But ten. If you come down here uh, and visit the studio, maybe we can we can do a hard mod or something. Having a hard time convincing ten to modify GPUs right now because it sounds like ten wants a little bit of a break from that. Who'd have, who'd have figured? But uh, maybe sometime in the future we can do some hard mods. Otherwise, Joe really wants to do some e-powers and zombie powers on the 3000 series. OK. Uh, all right. What cooler are you using? This has a liquid freezer to uh, 280 on it right now, just for the CPU. We're not really doing too much crazy on the, um, the CPU side of things. OK. So I get the drivers going. Uh, all right. And on the store, if you go to store.gamersnexus.net, we've got our brand new 1 million subs t-shirt that is available in limited quantities right now where we have eight sizes available. So we're trying to take the count of each, the distribution of the sizes that people want. So we can make the right ones. That way everyone can get the size they want. Uh, that is currently still in production because you all pushed us to 1 million way faster than we projected. But it's getting made pretty quickly. The quality is very good on the sample that uh, we just had shipped out to us. And um, looking forward to getting those in. But on store.gamersx.net, you can back order those if you want to make sure you get one. The previous, actually, this is one of them, the previous limited shirts, like this uh, polygon foil shirt we sold out of in, uh, I think that was three weeks, maybe, for that one. OK. Extreme driver install is going right now, and we're going to have to do this for each card just to make sure uh, the drivers don't get all screwy and stuck on stuff. Uh, also, I'll point out the mouse mats are, do I have one out? I don't have one out right now because I'm using the one that we've got here. But the mouse mats are uh, down to 10% of the inventory, so they're still in stock and shipping right now, um, but not, not for long. We'll be back ordered on those again soon. All right, let's do a restart. That was a shutdown. Close enough. Be right back. 
for the, the Founders Edition card, I don't have out right now because we already overclocked that in the review. If you want to check it out. Found one of the mouse mats. So that's the, uh, let's turn that on. That's the mouse mat I was talking about, desk size mat. It's got the blue rubber on the back. That was an unbelievable amount of extra work to get done. Very hard to find that color of rubber. Uh, blue stitching on the, the borders for endurance to hold up. And then we've got wireframe components on it for uh, CPU, coolers. We have motherboard, RAM, video card memory, all that stuff. So that's on store.gamersnexus.net. I think we're probably going to sell out in the next few days of these, and then they'll be back on back order. OK, we're booted in. Let's get going here. So I'm going to start with a complete stock run of the Asus Tough. Does this have a VBIO switch? This does have a VBIO switch. It is in quiet mode right now. I'm going to do a reboot, or we're going to go into performance mode. So do you have cable length to get a shot this direction, Andrew? Uh, so this is the BIOS switch on the card right there. And if you're not too familiar with these, they're very simple. There's just dual BIOS on this card. There's an arrow pointing the performance that way, quiet this way. It's always really nice to actually have them marked. And um, that's just going to change the fan profile and potentially the power limit, almost definitely the power limit. We've done power testing on this card, but I haven't looked at the data yet. And um, so we want in performance mode today so that we get the full power limit and uh, hope we can overclock it a little bit further. OK, so let me turn the monitor towards the screen, the camera, I mean. Let's rest this LN2 pot down. That's going to be for liquid nitrogen this weekend. Uh, so actually, we don't need precision yet. Let's do just a 3D Mark run. I'm going to do just Port Royal, I think, because it's a pretty quick benchmark. It's an RTX benchmark, so we'll see interesting scaling. I'm not in the absolute newest version of Sysinfo, but that's fine. Let's click Run. I'm going to write down the scores, write down the clocks, and uh, that will be something we can hopefully compress into a recap at the end of the stream. It's going to be a couple hours for this stream. i just make a spreadsheet really quick for the stat tracking while we go. RTX 30 overclocks. So I'm going to do, I guess we'll do clock or like core offset, core clock. Let's do, yeah, core offset, mem offset. Oh, we need power also. I'm just making a, a spreadsheet to track the progress as we type numbers in. And this will allow me to. Uh, kind of reference back and determine where did it start to become unstable, where did we potentially have power limit issues, VREL issues, uh, voltage reliability for that one, VOP issues, or um, I guess over temperature issues. Let's do write down the fan percent while we're at it. What else do I need? I guess might as well log the temperatures. It's not really, it's not a review, so it's not controlled temperatures here in the sense that we would typically do, but it, it still helps me to log the temperature as we go every now and then. So I'll run this windowed every now and then. When it's windowed, the scoring won't be valid, but it will allow us to keep an eye on things like CP, or GP temperature rather, and whatever else, frequency. And that's mostly useful just because uh, as we keep an eye on those things, we can make determinations as to the uh, thermal thresholds for where the clock changes. So with GPU boost, the way NVIDIA does its, its boosting behavior, every couple degrees, you'll get a, um, you'll get a, a, an increase in your core frequency every couple degrees lower it is. OK. Did I miss the pre-recorded jokes? No, I don't think there have been any of those yet. That was the first one I saw. A lot of people saying they couldn't get a card. Do you use GPU-Z to see if you're power limited? That is one of the very useful tools for determining that, yes. Uh, did you get the new drivers? I'm using the final press drivers. Doesn't matter what they are. All that matters is that it's the same drivers for all these cards, because we're overclocking anyway. Uh, and uh, I'm just kind of de making determinations as to which card will clock the highest, be easiest for us to work with. We are not, this is not the FTW3. This is the, someone's telling everyone in chat, it's the FTW3. This is the Asus Tough. Where's the NOS? We do have liquid nitrogen in these two tanks. We're going to be using that this weekend in additional overclocking with these cards with the Kingpin Icon pot mounted to them. 
and that will be with uh, that'll be with Joe Bearded Hardware here to help us out with the liquid nitrogen overclocking. Okay, let's see. I haven't. Uh, so this is about a minute fifty for this benchmark. So I'm gonna write down these numbers, and then we're gonna overclock it and keep going. So let me. I need a column for total score or graphic score. I guess there's only one graphics score, and then graphics FPS. So that was full stock. I'm just gonna write down stock. Graphics score was 11845. FPS 54.84. As a reminder, FPS in uh, FPS in 3D Mark benchmarks is very granular. So uh, a one, a two FPS change is actually much more significant here than it would be in a gaming workload because it is built to stress the cards. Okay, so now what I want to do is run this except with uh, windowed, if it's an option, yes, windowed mode. And then we're going to open up GPU-Z, and we're just going to keep an eye on the complete auto behavior. That means auto fan speeds, auto everything, and, uh, and see kind of how it, how it performs in terms of the clocks. Uh, I probably won't let this do a complete run, but that'll give us the basics, the baseline, and then we'll increase everything. Other reviewers said the press review drivers have issues with overclocking. I, uh, I didn't have issues with overclocking, so I don't know. We've done a lot of overclocking here, and I don't really have any problems with it. Okay. Are you not using PCAT? No, because we're just overclocking right now, so I don't care about the power consumption. We'll check power consumption once we do the reviews of the cards, the partner model cards. Just bought a mouse pad. Thank you. Roger said, uh, just bought a mouse pad in the chat. Let's see. Uh, how big is the board compared to Founders Edition? Founders Edition 3080 is not that large. It's pretty comparable to like, uh, like previous partner model cards, FTW3, for example, 1080i FTW3. They're pretty close. How can you bypass the stock power limit? Very easily. Uh, we will do that with software in a moment. But um, if you mean bypass the limited stock power limit, then what we'll have to do is download custom vBiOSes this weekend for, uh, for the liquid nitrogen overclocking to give us more power. You could also do shunt resistor mods. So this is kind of bouncing around as expected as the, work, as the scenes change, but we're between 1905 and 1950 megahertz. It will start to level out as the temperature increases. It's in the 60s right now. These are not numbers you should be taking home to mean anything because it's not, uh, you know, it's not a review scenario. I'm just keeping an eye on it for purposes of these clocks and the behavior of them. So 1905, 1950 is about our range here, occasionally 65. And uh, that'll give us a baseline. It looks like our limitation is power, as you would expect. That's what perf cap reason is. And board power via GPU-Z, which is uh, accurate enough for, for comparison, at least against itself. We're looking at 340-ish watts. Uh, we'll have to do separate testing, obviously, for more info. Okay. Is there anything else we can take away from this thus far? Not particularly. Fan speed auto seems to be ramping itself to about 1600 in open air, 21 degrees Celsius ambient. Uh, we'll have to do noise testing on that for the review. But it looks like the final scenes here, it's going to be 1920, 1935. OK, good enough. So let's launch X1. I'm going to write down some of these numbers we just saw. So 100% power. Core range was like 1905 to 1950. Core offset was zero. Mem offset was zero. Fan was auto 60s. Temp was like 60 something, 61 or something like that. OK. Let's just increase this. So it goes to 110%. I'd like to address something with this power target. Uh, sometimes people talk about the percentage power target that different board partners allow you with their cards. And you'll see comparison online where people are like, well, this ASUS card allows you to do 125%, and this, I don't know, MSI, EVGA, whatever card, only allows you to do 110%. So 125 is higher, so that allows more power. I think this is obvious. Sorry if it is. But uh, percentage is multiplied by some base metric, some base number. 
So 125% is not necessarily higher than 110% if 110 is a higher base number. So I know that seems really obvious, but it is a common misconception that you can just look at the power offset and like that's the one that has the higher percentage is the winner. Um, that's not always the case. So as you start getting into those higher end cards, uh, a lot of the time they will have boosted power targets stock. So you, you do end up with 10% meaning more than 25 in some scenarios. Anyway, uh, wanted to point that out. Let's just increase the power target. Tell it to run again and keep an eye on the behavior of the clock because we were power limited. Should be windowed, yes, okay. So I'm gonna write down 110% for this. Uh, power, okay. Let's see what kind of messages do we have. Lots of store picks up, pickups. I can't shout out all these, but I'll do a few. We had Mitchell from Oregon pick up a limited edition gold foil, one million sub shirt. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, let's do like two more quickly. We had Clay from Kentucky pick up one of the new uh, gold foil shirts as well. And last one I'll read for now. Uh, let's see, this one. We had William in New Jersey pick up a, a medium mod mat. Those are actually still in stock and shipping right now. Thank you for all that. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at these numbers if they change at all. And they have. You can see that we're maxing out about 1995, 1980 now. It's hovering closer to 1960. There's a 2010 hit. So uh, now the, the frequency has climbed just by increasing the power target. None of this is news. This is how NVIDIA cards behave. And uh, this is just, uh, uh, this is something we can increase further with, with frequency offsets as well. I haven't actually looked at this benchmark very much. It's pretty cool looking. But this is uh, a ray tracing benchmark. So it will fully leverage the card. So as this runs, we'll get some frequency decay from the frequency, the temperature rise over time. That's expected part of boosting. This is why liquid nitrogen helps a lot. Uh, the 2080 Ti's we brought down to about minus 120 degrees, 125 on the card we had, and that would give us some additional overclocking headroom. Actually, a lot of additional overclocking headroom. But you could also tune the V core on those cards, and you can't really do that with these when they're fully uh, controlled through an interface like this. You would need custom tools for it or hardware tools. So we're going to call this range somewhere in the 1965, 1980 megahertz range. It's very stable at 65 right now. I'm going to write down a peak of about 2010. Now these are just rough notes. These are not like review notes, uh, purely for, for me to keep track of as we go today. So 1965 to 2010 or so. Average is maybe like 65. Core offset zero, M offset zero, and then auto fan. It is pushing it still to about 68% in the current temperature with a GPU temp of about 61. And then now what we're going to do is close all this. I'm going to get a baseline graphics score for this. We'll get rid of precision. I should probably technically should probably close it, but we'll just minimize it today. And full screen. Oh, we'll just click that. Run. This is going to be a full pass. Uh, and no GPUZ in the background this time, full screen. So this will give us a number that we can then produce for what's the change just from increasing the power target if you do a, an almost literally zero effort overclock, as opposed to uh, as opposed to you know actually trying. <laughs> so if you just install the card and then drag the slider, uh, the numbers that come out of this would represent what you would get. Okay. Let's see what's chat saying. Let me check the super chats. Where did we stop? That is, sorry for the noise, that's a liquid nitrogen tank. It's just off gassing, it'll stop in a second. It's under pressure, so uh, let me mute the mic for a second so it's not too loud. Well, literally right when I push mute, it stopped. So that's a normal part of having a tank that's brand new. We just got that in today for the weekend. Still, still scares me every time it goes off. But um, yeah, it's a pressure release. So these are supposed to stop these particular ones I ordered at about 22 PSI, I think. And then they'll off gas. I'm not stand too close to the, yes, it's under 20 now. So now we are in good shape for that. I'm getting a call from someone from NVIDIA. Let me mute my line because I'm not sure.
Okay, uh, you can hear me again? Cool. It's all good. I, I decided to answer it to make sure we weren't like breaking some kind of rule, but we're all good. They just wanted to uh, probably talk about what the plans are for uh, future benchmarks. Okay, so this is running. Yeah, the sorry about the uh, the noise on the Allen two tank. <laughs> Apparently, other people in chat got spooked too. Yeah, go figure. Nvidia calls like immediately when the Allen two tank goes off. <laughs> like. Uh, there's no special no Allen 2 rules yet, so <laughs> set the alarm bells off. But yeah, so like I was saying, these are filled with liquid nitrogen. Um, they have a, a pressure limit. They have a bunch of valves. They're, as I understand it, vacuum canisters basically. And once they sort of hit the uh, uh, the pressure threshold, they'll off gas a little bit of the nitrogen and uh, keep it safe. So that is expected behavior. But this one just happens to be a brand new tank from hours ago. Let me check see if these messages are important. <laughs> I've got I've got partners now asking me, did, did you break an embargo? But we didn't. We're good. Because uh, NVIDIA called. OK, uh, so chat's still funny. <laughs> uh, I'm just reading the, uh, why Precision X1 over Afterburner? Great question. No, spe no special reason. Uh, they work just as well for this kind of stuff as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure maybe the more, well, I don't know. I think most people don't really mind too much, but I'm sure you have like a, a user side decision. I just like precision because it's, it's very simple and I'm really only doing a couple things with it. Uh, it's reliable. I understand how it works. So that's my, my full reasoning for it. There's nothing special behind it at all. You can use either one and be perfectly fine. Afterburner is another good tool. So we've got a slight increase, about 100 points. Let's just get a percentage on that. I just do a quick percentage calculation. So 11845, oh, 11916 minus 11845 divided by 11845, so that's new minus old divided by old, is a, uh, is that correct? It's a half a percent change. So just changing the power target doesn't do much for you, at least in this application. Let's actually do an overclock now. Now I got to get back to those super chats. Hopefully that thing doesn't go off too much more. I apologize for the noise if it does. This is, I can't really give you a warning because it, it surprises me too. <laughs> uh, let's start with, uh, I don't know. I think we're going to have trouble once we hit like an 80 megahertz offset. Let's start at, at 50 feels so weak. Let's start at like 60 and just kind of increase from there. I'm going to set the fans up a little higher. Let's try them at like 75. Well, let's see how loud it is at 100. If it's bearable, we'll run at 100. That'll give us a little bit of extra room uh, by way of having uh, lower temperatures. It's actually not too bad so far. OK. Someone said, I've been using the Afterburner since I bought my GTX 460 Cyclone new. That's a great life, great service life for the card. I mean, if you can keep your video cards going that long, then awesome. Uh, definitely don't always need the newest stuff. OK, so we're offset here. Let's just go ahead. And what I'm going to do is run one of the stress tests that's built in. And we're going to do a, let's do a time spy extreme windowed looping. And the reason I'm doing this, instead of doing a full pass, I am going to modify the clocks as it runs in the background, and we're going to find the point at which it hard crashes and then step down from that point. So this will be a, a much quicker way for us to sort of validate what kind of range we should be in for our clocks. And uh, it will allow us to, to move through the cards a little faster since we have three to work with today. OK. A couple of orders came in on store.cameraisnexus.net. Thank you for the support. That is always the uh, most direct way to assist with these streams. So we had one from Octavio picked up from Arizona, picked up a uh, limited foil shirt, X570 chipset Metro poster. Those are actually really cool. And the lightweight Raglan hoodie. Let me read one more. Uh, had one from Kyle in New Jersey. It's another New Jer Jersey order today. Picked up a wireframe mouse map. Thank you, Kyle. Okay. So let's take a look at everything and just kind of quickly dial stuff. It has an Insta crashed. It's always a good start. So we're in the range now. It's, uh, it's kind of variable, but 1980 I'm seeing at the bottom, and we saw 2070 at the peak. But it looks like it's lev leveling out, averaging around 1980 to 2000. Um, 
Let's, oh, is precision reading a different number than, oh, they are. One of these, they're, they're slightly asynchronous, these two numbers. So they're going to be a little bit, one's, I don't know which one's ahead and which one's behind, but they're, there's a bit of a latency in one of them. Okay, let's try 80. I'm just looking for where it crashes. So I'm going to type in my notes. Uh, let's do 60. Uh, I'll just make a note, no insta crash. So I know I can always return to that baseline. What's chat saying? Uh, let's see. Can I have one of those 3080s? Um, I just broke them all right now. Sorry, you can't have any. Uh, I, need, I need them. Does boost lock help benches? Great question. Uh, it definitely can. So with liquid nitrogen, I have a stream with uh, with Kane Pen, Vince, and with Jay. So Jay's two cents. We did a charity stream with EVGA, I think it was last year, and uh, we did use a boost lock. And it did, in fact, help with stability, with kind of keeping an eye. Because as you can see here, this is kind of annoying to, to gauge. You don't really know exactly where you are. You can lock it. But um, I find it's a little easier just for streams like this where we're using all stock cooling to leave boost locks off and just let it kind of, to kind of control itself. Uh, otherwise, we just crash a lot more. Once we're under LN2, we'll probably be using a boost lock and that'll be this weekend. But great question. Yes, it does help. Uh, I would not necessarily recommend it for a 24-7 OC for your daily use because it is, it is harder to keep stable. And when you're talking daily use, it, it's, it's important to have something that's not a pain in the ass. So uh, I would recommend it for competitive overclocking. But for what we're doing today, just like kind of bending for daily user, I would do it more like, like this fashion without boost lock. So this one is actually running steady, but I'm not seeing too much uplift. It does look like it's averaging a bit higher, and we will have to validate that with scores. It's an important thing. This I expect it to start crashing soon. Uh, a lot of these, I think, peak at 20, 2025, 2050. But the important thing you need to know is um, uh, for overclocks, especially GPUs, but also undervolting on CPUs and Ryzen, you should always, always validate your scores. So before you start running final benchmarks, Run a baseline, run an occasional benchmark. Cinebench for CPUs is good. Uh, 3D Mark stuff, I think Firestrike's free. For GPUs, is pretty good. And you want uh, benchmarks along the way, because there is a chance you'll see performance regression, and it's a pretty good chance where you'll push clocks to where they look stable and they're running, but in fact, there's memory errors in the background, or it's just not as good as you think. Memory's a great example where, like, 2080 TIs, we could run some of them at. Uh, like 1080 megahertz, we can run some of them at 1300 megahertz, but every now and then you'll sit at like 1200 and the scores are terrible and you drop it to 1100, they're actually really good, but it's not crashing. Something for you to know. Shouldn't you max the voltage slider? It's more of a placebo slider. It doesn't really do all that much. Uh, maybe it's changed for amp here, but traditionally it, it hasn't really done a whole lot. Um, unfortunately, you don't really actually have voltage control with NVIDIA. It will need uh, more custom cards for that, but it might do a little bit. So with 100 megahertz offset, we are seeing the highest peaks thus far. I think I just saw 2080 or something, 2070. 2115 is very high. Uh, 2130, did it crash or did it complete? I think it crashed. So that looks like it may not be stable. Let's go ahead and run it through Port Royal and just see if it's Port Royal stable, because that's the one we're benching today. Ah, good question. Breakout says, can you explain the 1% lows on the FE overclock? Uh, was it a not validated memory clock? Yeah, so really good question. For review purposes, <laughs> placebo slide, yeah. Uh, for review purposes, we're on a tight crunch. And basically what we'll do, because you're looking at a day of work to run the, ta the benchmarks, we'll test in a couple of applications, mostly 3D Mark for stability. And once we get it, looking stable in at least two of these tests, we then say, okay, let's, let's take this clock and apply it to the review cycle. And for most games, it works out okay. But every now and then, you'll hit a game where the frame times get worse because of an unstable clock. And in that instance, you are exactly correct. Uh, unstable memory clock is one of the contributing factors to that. So as far as, uh, I guess, a good user piece of user advice I can give you all, 
a lot of people will think that they've degraded their GPU over time because they had it overclocked, some new game comes out, they test it, it crashes. But the good news is uh, it was probably just never quite fully stable for everything when you first set it. And that new game came out, it stresses the card in a slightly different way, and now you think it's degraded, but actually it's just not stable for that game. Um, it all depends on what kind of instructions you're dealing with, stuff like that. So uh, I guess the point is, these cards, unless you're doing stuff like, like uh, hard modding or more extreme overclocking, they really go to great lengths now to, to stop you from making them too good, would be one way to phrase it, or to stop you from harming the card would be maybe NVIDIA's way to phrase it. Um, Ideally, you have more voltage control, stuff like that, but you can hurt the card if you have that stuff. We think that's fine. It should just be a warning for the user. But either way, you're, you're mostly protected from uh, anything that could long-term degrade the card unless you're really getting more into it. Okay. Uh, I think I've answered a lot of normal chat questions, so let's switch over to Super Chats. And let me scroll up to where we stopped. Uh, Jared West, $50. Wow, thank you. Jared said, uh, Der Bauer sh Power shunt mod soon on EVGA. I'll have to talk with Joe. We are probably going to use the EVGA card for um, the OC stream this weekend. And I th think we may do a shunt resistor mod. I'm certainly fine with that if we get the testing done first. Is this actually better or worse? That's a little bit, that's about the same. That's within variance. So that is not, that is not improved. Uh, so we need to do a memory overclock. So um, this is also what I was talking about, validating scores. It may be uh, too aggressive, but let's, let's bring that down to 90 and run it again and let's see if that's better uh, outside of error. And if it's not, then we'll just start doing memory and we'll be pretty close to closing in on this card's final point for where it is today, which is air cooling. But anyway, um, Yes, we will probably do some kind of power mod at some point. Shunt resistor mod is uh, a common one we do. Uh, Lothilial Lothsey, ten dollars. Don't let hair get caught in the fan, please. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> the Ozum, five dollars. Hi, Steve. Hi, uh, Sean D, twenty dollars. I tried to pick up on how far back are we? We're about half an hour behind. I, I particularly run on a 30 to 60 minute delay on Super Chats. I tried to pick up three today NVIDIA, Newegg, uh, Best Buy, and Amazon. Two laptops with multiple browsers refreshing every three seconds. That is hardcore. Sold out in 45 seconds on all sites, Sean says. Not one founders or AIB to be had. I know I'll get stuck with a 3090. Get stuck with a 3090. That's <laughs> like. Uh, I guess I got stuck with this Ferrari. Ugh. Not quite what I wanted, but yeah, I mean, if it, if it's if you like needed a card and you're doubling your budget for it, that kind of sucks. But uh, we'll see how the 3090 is, though. Haven't tested it yet. I agree, though. I, I was actually checking. I was refreshing the uh, browsers all morning for the launch, trying to see if we could pick up some more cards, and they were. I never once saw it say add to cart. That said, there's a lot of Inventory as we understand it, but the demand is, is super high as well. Snake Juice, five dollars, says, Steve, my wife found a case she likes better. Can you get Roman to send me the O11 Mini instead? Thanks. So Snake Juice has been sending in super chats for a couple streams now, asking me to ask Roman, aka Dare Bauer, to send him a, a mini, an O11 mini. Uh, this is approaching the end of the benchmark. We're gonna see if it's within variance or not, and then we'll um then we'll do memory clocks on it. And I'm going to do those with a stress test running so we can adjust them more quickly. Uh, Hugo LaMarche, what is the pro overclocking your GPU compared to the auto boost that it's already doing when doing something demanding? I think I understand this question. Uh, thanks, love the channel. Thank you. So, oh, the pro of, I misread that, sorry. The, the pro, the upside of overclocking compared to auto boost. The upside is typically you can get a bit more performance um, especially with memory, I would say it's more worthwhile for gaming than for something like maybe Blender. If you're running Blender 
cycles or something. I, I don't know. Unless you can really guarantee it's stable, I don't know that I'd really want to mess with it too much. So this is within error. Uh, we're just going to leave it at plus 90 there. We might want to go down to plus 80 in a bit, but let's do some memory stuff first. Um, so the upside is you can get a bit more performance. It's fun. Uh, you can get a lot more performance if you do it more competitively and if you have a higher power target. Like right now, you can see we're still power limited, which is not a surprise really. That's not new. Uh, power target's 110%. And if this board maybe came out with a VBIOS that's like special for overclocking, sometimes they do that, uh, you could potentially get more out of it. But you really start hitting diminishing returns fast for value out of that, that type of clock or that type of power. Um, you're not going to get a, a proportional gain to the power. A lot of inventory for reviewers, someone says. No, it actually was. Uh, a pretty good amount of inventory. We, we have a video coming up on that shortly. Uh, okay. Let's see, Scott M says, love what you guys do. Looking forward to seeing what you can do with these beasts. I am too. I'm most looking forward to, well, the reviews should be fun because I want to look at these coolers versus the FE card. This one, if we got a, a this angle shot of it, um, this one will actually, you can see there's a bit of a, a blow through. Like I said in the past, this isn't brand new, this generation with the 30 series, but NVIDIA is pushing it super hard because what they did was put, stick a fan on the back and really leverage that approach. Uh, we've seen this in the past with um, uh, 5600 XTs, for example, or whatever they're called, with, set, with uh, Power Color did this. Sapphire has done it too. I, maybe the Nitro? can't remember off the top of my head. But we've seen that before where the PCB stops and you blow the air through. But you will see this leveraged a lot more. Um, for the 30 series than perhaps in the past, and that's because of uh, sort of design assistance from NVIDIA to its partners. And if we look at another one of these, here's the FTW3. We had some, someone in chat, I missed it earlier, but someone said something about like, Steve, why is there red clown lipstick on the FTW3? EVJ, as I understand it, is going to be offering free replacements of this color. I think they have black and silver, and I think they were considering other colors. But it sounds like, I don't know, can you just pop that off? I actually haven't taken this apart yet. Oh yeah, it's got clips right there, you can kind of see it. We don't have great light for this kind of shot, but you probably see the clips. Uh, there's some red on the bottom. So I think you can just pop that off and replace it. And um, I guess that's certainly something. They've still got the red line on the backplate. I don't know if they're going to do a backplate replacement, but... We'll ask about that before the review. Anyway, this one's got some perforations in the back plate. Um, most of what you're seeing is just paint, but there are some perforations. They're not doing nearly as much with this as that card or as the 3080. That said, they are completely different designs. You can see there's a lot more fin density here used across the whole card. The shroud does not cut over the fin stack like on the, the, the FE cards for the 20 series. So you're not constricting the airflow in that sense. Down here, the fin stack uh, butts up right against the shroud. So it's not like that XFX um, thick card where it completely obstructed airflow. So that's good. Uh, the air is venting into the board and up and out. So you're not going to have as much exhaust out the back, but there are perforations in the I.O. And this is all stuff we'll validate, obviously, in the reviews. I'm not, you know, I'm not really commenting on if the design's good or not, but we're just kind of showing it. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's uh, those pinholes in the aluminum fin stack where you can see the air flowing, uh, some of the air escaping that way. So, um, let's see. That's how you know it's bad. They're offering replacements on day one. Yeah, I mean, at least they're doing it, but, because um, clearly based on the sales today, they didn't need to, I don't think, I think EVJ would have sold through them all, whether or not it had the Batmobile on the front of it. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely, not the best design decision based on the response. Uh, so this card, you can also see, back to the original point, there's a, a flow through there. And um, that's part of the, the design trend you're going to see this generation. Let me open up. I was supposed to be changing the memory clocks, and we'll go back to talking about that. Uh, get out of here. Uh, so let's do a 600 offset. I'm going to just try and make it crash. Uh, and then step it down. So it's running time spike, time, time spike, time spike extreme in the background. We're going to change the clocks. Uh, you'll notice here that the 
you've got the frequency here as 10,000. You'll see the frequency here is 1,200. Uh, that's just because of one. Uh, so you've got effective clocks and actual clocks with memory. You have multipliers for GDDR and for DDR. Um, that's all that is. Let's overclock that to 7. This is around where I'm going to expect it to crash. It looks like it may have. Yep. So 7 is where we crashed on our FE. Or actually, it was where we were stable on the FE, I think. Uh, some games it was unstable. So that's about our limit for mem offset on this card. Let's try 600. See if it's stable for maybe a minute or two of this. And then we'll run a, run a pass on it and see if the scores improve or not. OK, we'll look at the cards again in a second. But had an order, a couple orders coming. I can't read them all, but I'm going to try and get a couple of them as we go. Uh, Javier from Florida picked up a wireframe mouse mat. Thank you. Uh, we're super low on inventory for those. Let me see what that looks like right now. Uh, and let me read another one of these while we're going. One literally just came in. Zach from Minneapolis picked up a limited foil shirt as well. Thank you. Let me get this going. Okay. So this is not crashed. That's a good sign. Uh, we are locked at about 2010. This, this benchmark I've always liked for like a very reliable frequency read. You can see here that it's much less variable than in Port Royal. So we can see we're in the 1990 to 2025 range. But commonly, about 2,000, I'd say, is the average, just eyeballing it. Uh, so that's kind of, in a sense, unfortunate. I'd like to see this go to 2050, but I think we need more power to do that. Best way I could do that right now is with a shunt resistor mod with liquid metal. Um, you could also piggyback the shunt resistors. This is a, an extremely unclean hack job of that, but it does work. It works very well. <laughs> this is a super hack job. This was my first attempt, my first attempt ever at soldering a shunt resistor on top of another shunt resistor. I am not very good at it, but it does work. And it is on there. And my first attempt was on a Titan RTX. It says 2080 Ti, but it's a Titan RTX. So a $2,500 card. See that? That like horror show of the, the, the misery of all the solder. There's a bunch of flux on there still. But they work. And basically, it's a 5 milliohm shunt resistor on top of another one. That tricks the card into giving us a lot more power, like significantly more. Helps a lot with overclocks. I think that's about what I'd have to do to get these cards going. Uh, liquid metal kind of works, but it is more of a pain to manage. Harder to get it right. Still running. OK, cool. I'm happy with that. Let's close all this, and let's run a, an actual scored benchmark pass. Port Royal. Run. See if it crashes. Uh, it may be stable in some, but not others, as a reminder. OK, what's your favorite case? Well, I, it depends on what you're buying for. We have a bunch of case reviews with hundreds of cases uh, and variations thereof tested over the past few years. For airflow right now, and a couple different price ranges off the top of my head, uh, O11 Dynamic, but you need to buy fans for it. Good for liquid coin too, especially the XL. That's at $200. The P500A is a very good out-of-box air cooling case. The, um, what is the? Uh, TD500, that's the name of it. Cooler Master TD500 was pretty good as well at a more budget price. The H500P Mesh tested well, but is barely available now. H500P Blank tested very well. Uh, we're testing the Landcool 215 right now as well, so that review will be up after we get through these GPU cycles. OK. Why did no reviewers touch on the fact that 10 gigabytes isn't future proof? Literally nothing is future proof. But also, we did talk about the memory. Uh, it's within the first 10 minutes of the review. It is time stamped. I would encourage you to check that section. 10 gigabytes is absolutely more than enough for gaming right now. So as a reminder, oh, this is running or I'd show you. But as a reminder, when you look at VRAM usage and GPU-Z and Afterburner and hardware info, that's not actually what's being used. That's what's being allocated or requested by the application. And what is being used is potentially less than that. So. A great test of this is if you pick like Black Ops 3 or some, Call of Duty was a good example this years and years ago. You pick some game that just requests all the VRAM. I don't know if that's lazy programming or that's just the best way to do it for their game. You can cycle through cards down from, say, 12 gigabytes 
or even 16 we tested at the time, to four. And you'll see it's always about the max capacity of the card requested, but you go from 16 to 12 to eight, uh, even to six the last time I did this, and you'll see that the texture resolution doesn't change, the performance doesn't change, and to test it, you really need to be testing for frame times, and you need to be looking for uh, like frame, frame to frame interval variability, not for just FPS averaged. So there are times when it will become limiting, but in the dozens of tests we ran, it was not an issue. Remember also that memory bandwidth is typically the issue before memory capacity, and that is largely solved by GDDR6X. GDDR6X is faster. Memory uh, residency doesn't need to be as high, so it can kind of purge. Okay. We got an actual real improvement in score this time. So now we are up from baseline original score 11845. It's not, not super great a uh, scoring change, but it is something. 12294, oops, 12294 minus 11845. <laughs> Shocking, 3.8% uplift. So we're going to really need liquid nitrogen to make, make these cards do something. Not the best overclock I've ever seen. <laughs> um, Compared to the 1080 Ti, even the 2080 Ti, 1080 Ti, sometimes you would get an easy, like, 10% uplift, 13% uplift, sometimes more, depending on what model you have. And four here is not super exciting, but uh, it's not necessarily because of the card. It's a mix of the card and the architecture and the fact that uh, we're only currently able to increase the power so much. So. NVIDIA talked big game about the uh, scoring with Ampere following a greater, a steeper trajectory than with Turing, where it would asymptote a lot sooner. And so far, we haven't really seen that into overclocking, but definitely into the, the core performance. You see that? Just it hits a wall. So there's obviously a reason they cut it off where they did. Let me write these scores down. 12294. I need to read a super chat, too. Uh, actually, a lot of them. 56.92 is that. I passed, and that is a 100% fan speed. I'll write that down. Core offset was 90, I think. Mem offset was it six or seven? Six. Okay, that may be about the max for uh, for this card. So, at least without you know doing actual modding and stuff, but. Let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit and just see if it scores better. And uh, that would just tell us if it's maybe a, a less than stable overclock. I really need to do some super chats. We're way behind on them. So uh, let me catch up on these for a moment. Let's see. So we had Cass HL says, have fun overclocking. Thank you. I really like doing 3D overclocking, like GPUs, that sounds like a marketing term. Uh, 3D benchmarking is really fun. Um, I don't know, Cinebench is good, but you do it so much with like all the Ryzen launches and uh, it's just, it's not quite as exciting to do as the 3D stuff because 3D, you can start hard modding these and doing cool stuff to really increase the, the limits. Uh, a three to 4% increase, is it even worth it to OC? Well, I don't know. not. I mean, maybe for fun, maybe for a little bit of competitive edge, but if you really want to get into it, I'd say you, you probably want to go hunt down a custom vBIOS that allows more power offset, and then it's probably worth it. Uh, these cards are pretty close to the limit, as is it appears, but I will get into it some more. Okay. Um, so I think, yes, I agree with the person saying you need an XOC BIOS. That's definitely, that's definitely true. Uh, we do need an XOC BIOS. Do we have any 3-pin? I think we should do the FTW. If it, yeah, 3-pin there. Let's do the FTW3 next. Uh, okay, so Andrew Fife says, thoughts on scythe coolers. Ended up getting a FUMA 2 because it was only dual tower that could fit my O11. I haven't tested them yet. We've had a lot of requests. We have them here. Scythe won't leave me alone. It's actually becoming quite annoying where they would email us like every week for a year basically. And I finally said, OK, fine, send them. I'll get to it when I get to it. Uh, so we will get to them, but we're slammed. Austin Sloop says, love my GN mouse map. The quality is amazing. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, James Howry, your CPU is the high point of the AIO. I, I told Andrew before we started that someone would say that. Yes, for a temporary overclocking setup, that is not 
leveraging the CPU, though. I'm not worried about it. Uh, you, do, you, you would have a point for permanent use, though. Zachary Santer. Uh, Steve, yo, good game on the one mil. Much love. Thank you. Uh, one million crept up way faster than we thought. We do have those shirts, though, on the store, on store.gamersaccess.net. We have gold foil, uh, one million sub shirts. It is a limited shirt. Last time we did a limited shirt was this one. Well, we did the Australia charity shirt. We raised 100% um, of those proceeds went to uh, wildlife charities after the bushfires. But this was the last foil limited shirt we did, and uh, it sold out in a couple weeks. So if you want to grab the new one, go to store.gamersaccess.net and grab the foil shirt. We did have a score decay here. I think, yeah, we were over 12. We were 12, 2, 4, 5 before. So we had a score regression, which means that, in fact, 90 was actually doing something. So I'm going to write those down as our loose final numbers for now. I may change my mind once we review it and I have more time on the card. But we're going to write that down as final. And we're going to shut this down and swap cards. So I uh, think in FTW3 to get use out of the three pin and see if maybe the BIOS goes a little higher. I cut the power on the PSU. Oh, am I using a Corsair one? No, oh, that was a mistake, but that's fine. It's a good power supply. It just unfortunately has a um, really good power supply. Unfortunately has overcurrent protection, and I don't have it s don't have Q on here right now, so I can't modify it. But we're not going to we're not going to hit OCP today with these cards, so we're fine. All right, so that one we can call done. That screw out of the bench. Uh, let's go to this one. I have an awkward angle to install a video card. Okay, this is a three eight pin setup. Let me grab a super chat while this is going. Uh, let's see, unknown stunt man, waifu fifty seven hundred XC versus thirty eighty. Well, I think we all know the winner of that. I don't know that it really needs to be said. Uh, <laughs> Actually, the real winner is the uh, the cute pet card. That one, I actually really do like the cute pet video card. It's got that like cat or dog or whatever it is molded into the shroud. I still think that's pretty cool. Um, okay, I can't see. Where is it? Someone says I'll take that card since you're done with it. I think I have a few more tests I need to do. Otherwise, I would. Can you plug that into HDMI, Andrew? <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. Nerd-E, Nerd-E says, stood in line for 16 hours. Holy crap. At Micro Center Denver and got my 3080. Can't wait to follow your OC guide. We'll probably have one after we get through all these. Man, 16 hours. I'm glad you got a card. If you said, stood in line for 16 hours, left empty-handed, Oh man, I would be pretty I would be pretty pissed off if that happened, but that's dedication. For anyone who's wondering why they can't get one, uh, nerd E has has the right idea, I guess. Oh that's brutal. Uh, I feel like they should be like serving you food and drinks while you're in line at that point. Garrett Bartholomew, Bartholomew says, uh, do you have a general idea when third party card breakdowns will start popping up on your channel? If you mean teardowns, then probably within the next couple days. If you mean PCB breakdowns, probably within the next couple days. But we're going to start with the first party one from Buildzoid. So he's got an FE card uh, set of photos that he's going to work with. And um, he'll be working on a, a um, full PCB analysis for us. And then after that, we'll be working on the cards. Some of these are reference boards, I think. I haven't taken them apart yet because I need to do actual testing on them first. But that should give you a basic idea. Uh, FCW3 versus Gaming X Trio, what are your thoughts? I don't have any thoughts on that right now, but I do have a Gaming X Trio on the way. MSI wouldn't sample us, that's not a surprise. Uh, I, however, did manage to get one. So um, we're going to be testing it, test it just like we would any other card, and uh, that's going to start being more of an overclocking look. So whether you, BIOS availability will be a big, big thing for those who has the higher power offset. Okay, I get a couple store orders. Thank you again for all the store orders. I, what's our inventory like on the uh, mouse mat? Wireframe mouse mat's been crazy. What is that? We are under, uh, is that right? 5%, 4.9% remaining of the initial inventory. 
So we sold through 5% of the, we sold through half of the, uh, I guess it'd be 50% of the 10% uh, of the mouse mats in just the stream. But thank you everyone for picking those up on the store. Uh, this is basically, if you're wondering like where the Schlieren photography stuff came in that's allowing us to photograph airflow, um, that video is getting edited today, by the way. So that'll go up in the next few days. But it's, it's this, it's the toolkits, it's the mod mats, and then everyone buying them. That's what's enabled us to buy all the testing equipment that we really expanded for for this generation, including the pressure analysis stuff. So thanks again for the, the support on that, on the store. And the super chats are a big help as well. So that's clearing. We're going to do a uh, new driver install. Let's see. That's a chat to read. Function. This function's just making fun of the EVGA um, card design. It was from a while ago. Slightly on the vulgar side, but it's funny. Uh, let's see, where's my drivers I want? Um, why am I opening DDA? We just did that. All right. Driver. Get that out of the way. Okay. All right. Drunken Beard, five dollars. Thank you. Says looking at getting a 3090 and a water cooling and water cooling and overclocking. Do you think it's worth dropping the extra for triple eight pin versus the dual eight pin? All depends on if the card actually lets you use that much power. If it is limiting itself, if it's got three eight pins and you can't draw more than like 380 watts, then probably not. Uh, but. That said, if you can get onto forums and find where overclockers leak custom BIOS is, then that's probably the, the best way to really leverage the extra pins. Typically, the ASUS Strix, the, the FTW3s, the gaming trios from, or Lightnings more so, from MSI, those cards typically have higher power target V BIOSes creep their way onto the web. So that would be your, your best option for those. The Strix and the uh, high end EVGA, especially. Dave Leviathan Prim says, hello, GN. Thanks for the live stream of this. I uh, need to pick up two more shirts, so I have one for every day of the week. Congrats on one mil subs. Thank you. That is much appreciated. Except if it's the same shirt from us, people will think that you never wash your clothes. But I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, OK, let's restart that. It's good to see uh, Dave back in the Super Chats as well, back in the stream. Grant, any ETA on when you'll get the Gaming X Trio? I was able to pre-order it. I want to see if I should change the brand. Uh, actually, yes. I just got an update on that from our supplier of it. It is, uh, it is going to be coming in tomorrow, actually. The Gaming X Trio comes in tomorrow. Uh, that said, I also have Joe arriving tomorrow, so we're going to be really busy with pre-benching and then doing live streams. That said, the Gaming X Trio will probably be one of the ones that we pre-bench to see if we want to put it under LN2. So there's a good chance you see some of it depending on, on how good it is versus these other ones. Haven't heard the liquid nitrogen container off gas in a little while. I'm just waiting, waiting for that scare again. Let's run a baseline. No, get out of here. Run, okay. So this is gonna be a baseline scoring for us. Uh, again, this is not like review approach. So keep that in mind. You shouldn't be buying a card strictly based off of this stream. Uh, we're just kind of bending them really quickly for when Joe comes in so we can get to the extreme overclocking a lot faster. If you're wondering, by the way, what we do for that, I have a liquid nitrogen pot back here. Here it is. This is an icon pot. Uh, so let's just use this. This 3080 is a good, uh, that's a good table. Um, so that's a a liquid nitrogen pot. It's currently shrouded in paper towels just to um, just to kind of wick the condensation. And if you haven't seen this kind of content before, check back this weekend. We're going to be live streaming with liquid nitrogen. It's a lot of fun. We bring it down to minus minus 120, minus 200 degrees almost Celsius. I think it's like 196 or something. Uh, and that allows us to push a lot more power through the card with power mods or custom V BIOSes. And then we just pour it into in there. It evaporates very quickly because you've already got a change from minus 190 whatever to ambient 21, plus all the heat from the GPU. So uh, always really fun. 
make sure you're subscribed and you keep an eye on, on Twitter and announcements and everything. We'll have that going up this weekend in live streams. Um, we should be able to push these cards significantly harder with that, especially because I've got custom V BIOSes already lined up that give us unlimited power. So that'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, that mounts to it. I got a brand new adapter plate. This adapter does not fit. So uh, Kingpin made new adapters to mount to the cards. And that's what will um, what allow us to do the overclocking. I guess just we have a lot of people in here who may not have seen our streams before. So just for sake of demo, uh, I'll just do a non, yeah, non-functional LN2 pour just to kind of show what you can expect this weekend. This is pretty full. So this is a doer. It's a 30 liter doer. Uh, and this is liquid nitrogen. So there's that. You can actually do some flow testing of the coolers with Allen 2. You can see the vapor gets sucked into the card, but unfortunately, as it loses agitation, you, you lose that effect. But I can probably make it happen again. Um, so yeah, when we pour this into a container, this is actually very convenient. This is a brand new um, T-Rex pot, is what he calls it. So it's a T-Rex liquid nitrogen pot. Uh, it's got some tape on it. I should probably cut. I'll pour it in there. You can kind of see what what the effect is. Even without a heat load, we should still have a lot of evaporation. Is this not sharp enough? Okay. Remember to always cut towards something that will hurt. Uh, so I have not clamped this down, so we're um. We've got potential for it to spill out at the sides, but try and adjust this. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's just the Allen 2 evaporating in the Allen 2 pot. And uh, that mounts the CPU in this case. So Joe and I will probably be doing CPU overclocking as well. I hope so. I hope we can do some record, world record attempts with the 3080s. That'll be a lot of fun. Push for the highest scores. Uh, at least until the 3090 comes out. So that's kind of what you can expect this weekend. Just playing around with cool stuff. It's getting very cold right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, that's what it looks like. And uh, I guess I'll do the usual demo, too. That's an LTT water bottle. Yes, it is. Uh, I'll have to send this, this uh, video to Linus so he knows. I've, I've met my quota for the month. But usual demo. Um, so Leiden Frost Effect is pretty cool. I wouldn't recommend doing this. But if you're worried about like us being safe, Joe and I have worked with this stuff a lot. And uh, the only time it's really a risk is when you like, if you cup your hand, pour into it, that's very bad. It's like putting your hand on a stove. If you let it soak into clothes, that would be bad. But when you're just pouring like into an Allen 2 pot and it kind of like bounces and hits your arm, it'll just roll off. Like it's, it's kind of crazy actually. Um, it'll just roll straight off of the surface it's on. So you can see a, a live demo right there. But anyway, more of that this weekend. I don't really know what to do with this nitrogen now. Okay, so 12140 is the baseline score. Baseline score for the Asus Tough was actually lower than that. Let me create a new set of data. So previous is Tough. This one's FTW3. And What's the reaction to the LN2? Do we have a lot of people here who haven't seen it before? Uh, about to start using that for Warzone so I can win for once. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one says pour one out for the homies. Okay. I'm just reading the chat because I think there's a, um, I th think there's probably a lot of people who haven't seen this stuff before. Uh, yeah, spoiling is the correct word, thank you, because of, well, because of the temperature differential. Okay, um, so 12140, to give you an idea for that positioning versus the previous card, let me update our score sheet. Uh, this is going to be full stock unless, does precision need to be cleared? I don't think it's applying anything, but we'll take a look, it may be. Um, if it's not applying anything, then great. If it is, then there's we're going to have to rerun that. So FPS 56.20. Let's take a look at precision before I say what the relative scoring is here. 
And of course, I'm not going to know if it's actually applied or if it's just like leftover data from previously. No, it's just now applying. So uh, I just heard the fan spin up. Cool. So we were running stock for this. So 12140 versus 11845. Let's just take a look at the baseline scoring difference. Divide by 11845. So new minus old divided by old. 2.5% uh, higher. Just full stock. No other changes. Does that matter? Well, depends on what the price difference is. Apparently right now, not even that matters because people had a hard time getting them. But uh, cool. So let's run... Port Royal with GPZ, and I'm going to reset the fan. So we're on our second card now out of three, if you're just tuning in. The first one was the Aces Tough, and this one is scoring higher baseline. Than there we go again. I'm going to mute my line. That's just a pressure release from liquid nitrogen. Everything's fine. I'm going to mute my line for one second. Okay, audio's back, Andrew. Cool. Yeah, so sorry about that for the noise. I, I have no way to warn you or I'd give you a headphone warning. Um, if you missed it from earlier, that's the liquid nitrogen tank that arrived today. We've got another one back there. This one's particularly good. Like we normally don't get LN2 tanks that are actually good. Uh, so it's actually maintaining its level of, LN of nitrogen gas. And um, every now and then once the pressure creeps up to a, a certain threshold, it will uh, exhaust, which is by design for safety. So that is a safety feature. It's just very loud. But anyway, sorry for the, uh, the, the ear killing. I'll keep muting my line when that happens, though, if that helps. All right. Default settings. And what I want to do is run this windowed. When not full screen. Windowed. Run. And then we're just going to kind of eyeball the performance figures as it goes to get an idea for baseline. Did I kill precision? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, yeah, people are asking why I hit it with the hammer. They're saying bonk, bonk, bonk. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny because that's what it sounds like, but I had my line muted. Um, so the reason I, I tap it with a mallet is because uh, if it exhausts that really cold gas for too long, it will freeze the valve open and it'll keep exhausting. Uh, I don't, you know, these, this, that particular thing I do with hitting it with a mallet is not safety advice, do not copy me, but um, it will, uh, if the valve freezes open, it'll break the ice and allow it to reclose once it, you know, once the pressure's back to where it should be. So that's why we do that. Okay. It's like a circus act today with the extra noise in the background. Uh, cool. So the frequency is, in fact, higher when fully stocked, which would explain our three-ish percent higher score. And that's going to put us, previously we were 1905 to 1950 with the tough. This one, as it's under 60 degrees, the frequency will be higher. So we're in the 2010, 2025 range right now. And we're going to start seeing this dip down every couple degrees of rise. So you're actually seeing it fall. Uh, it was hitting 1980 there for a second, and this is, a, again, a very variable um, benchmark, specifically. So 2055 is the highest I've seen out of this card. It may have done higher, but that's the highest I caught. And uh, for review, we, we do a bunch of logging so we can have hard data, but I'm just going by eye here. So this temperature ramps over the two minutes of the bench. You will see the frequency fall a bit, but I'm going to start taking some notes on the range. And... Uh, that will allow us to better understand what the card's doing. Um, any scores coming out of this when it's windowed will not be comparable to the previous ones. So what do you do when you leave it overnight and there's no one to hammer it to make it stop? Well, it shouldn't really be a problem, but the worst case scenario is it just leaks all of the nitrogen gas and it's not going to hurt. This is a giant open space. There's active air conditioning. You don't have to worry about narcosis where we are. Uh, so the only loss is $180 of nitrogen gas, which sucks, but it's not, not a big deal um, like I think people might think it would be. So definitely would suck, but uh, not for any catastrophic reasons. And it also, I, I just do that because we're on a stream and I want to make sure it's done quickly. Uh, so it's not for any, you know, not because we think it's going to be a problem. Okay, so we've got some baseline numbers. Let's go ahead and get precision open. I really need to catch up on Super Chats. We are pretty behind on them, so let me read some of those for a second while the next one runs. Let's start with 
Uh, Light Peach, $10, thank you very much. Says that Leanne Lee Galahad AIO review, question mark. Wasn't it done a while ago? I understand the hype over the 30 series. So done in a sense. We, we did run a bunch of the tests, but I need to validate those tests. And oh man, 105, well, 5% of a higher power target's not bad, I guess. It just depends on how high it is. Uh, that is, uh, I might, I've got a solution to this that we might deploy later. Um, EVGA, uh, Jacob, if you're watching, you know, you know the solution I'm thinking of. You can just text me yes or no, and I'll, I'll know if, if I can show it or not on the stream. Uh, okay, so let's do a 60. Let's, actually, let's, let's start with just the 205, and let's run a stress test uh, where it's going to be a bit more stable for the numbers we're getting and then kind of monitor the performance. Um, so yeah, Galahad review, the testing is done. I need to validate it, and then we need to write it and then produce it. I don't have a timeline right now because of video cards. It might be like two weeks. I'm thinking after the 3090 makes the most sense for us to post that. Uh, JP, $2, thank you, says, I have an urge to headbane for some reason. I don't know if that was when the canister was making a bunch of noise, but I'm sure that is a form of metal music somewhere. There are a lot of different varieties. It's like, uh, I don't know, Ellen 2 core or something. Shed, uh, seeing the 3080 FE going up to 370 watts with a mild overclock, what do you think this means for the 3090s? Isn't 370 basically all you can get from 2x8? Yeah, uh, in terms of the spec, that's about it. So um, in terms of what they're capable of, you could probably do more. But uh, that would make sense for the, the spec for official purposes. So what do I expect? Well. 3090, probably the partner models will really come into play there because um, otherwise, I'm getting a call from EVJ. Let me mute and answer. Uh, the question, so I, I've just unmuted my mic intentionally, but the, the question was just, why did one of your guys see me say that or something? Like, uh, so question is for the FTW3, um, I'm currently power limited with the VBIOS that shipped on the reviewer card. So the question is, can I fix that <laughs> uh, on stream? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Let me put this on speaker because I I just I just explained this to chat. But go ahead go ahead with your percentage slider spiel. You're on stream. Yeah, I was saying the percentage slider is pretty misleading. Our 100 percent is much higher than the traditional 100 percent. So. So 5% so, of a higher baseline is higher than 10% yeah, of a lower the baseline, baseline. The baseline power target is higher. So a lot of people are always like, hey, knock on my slider, I'll only go to 108. But actually that 108 is a lot higher than other cards, 120, you know, right. because the, the baseline's higher. So. Right. Well, that's, uh, that's Jacob from EVGA. Uh, you can tweet your questions at him if you if you want. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it cool. EVJ underscore Jacob? I'm yeah. famous now. Yeah, you're famous. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the info. All right. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Later. I think it's EVJ underscore Jacob F. I think is his Twitter handle. Uh, okay. So this is running, and I think we. We need to start increasing the clocks to really see a difference here. Let's try 60. If this is the other thing I should explain, just like he was explaining the power target being higher, if the baseline frequency is higher, then that will also mean the offset will be lower. So the offset number here, if we get limited at 60 instead of 90, doesn't mean the absolute clock is lower, but it means that the baseline is higher. If that, hopefully that makes sense. Everyone in chat saying, hi, Jacob from EVGA. <laughs> Oh, cool. Someone said, wow, those are good mics. He's clearly understandable. That's good to hear. I was worried about that. 
So that's launching another stress test. Let me catch up on these. Um, Sean D, I have on trusted authority that the vapor chamber heat pipes on the Founders Edition card are filled with the <laughs> are filled with the tears of Radeon Seven owners. Too soon. That was that was uncalled for, sir. Uh, <laughs> I can't read this name. It's it's in I uh, it's in a, a font I I can't read. I'm sorry. I think it's like. Well, I shouldn't even bother because I'm just going to anglicize the letters and then it won't actually be anywhere close to what it is. It says, uh, sad face, sent, CA, sent $20 Canadian. Sad face, Canada got barely any cards. Yeah, I think it's a, a global limitation too, not just you guys. Uh, cool, so we are maintaining slightly higher clock at the same temperature. Let's do a 40 offset here. Well, it would be nice if I actually hit enter. 40, see if it dies. Uh, what we're looking for is does it hold steady, and it is a lot steadier than it was. So we were dipping to 2000 to 2010, and now it's uh, like 2010, 2025, and we'll push that a little higher as we go. Read another one. Ad hominem says, would the 8600K, it scrolled up, come back. Would the 86, would the 8600K at 4.8 bottleneck this uh, GPU? Uh, I could look at our CPU benchmarks and determine that pretty quickly. I think our recent, one of our recent revisits of the 4000 series, let me try and answer that in a second, um, would, it, would address that question. This is clocked pretty much the limit already, I think. We would need more power target, which based on the read I was getting, we'll worry about that this weekend. So we'll run it as is for now. Um, so. 80, oh, sorry, 86. I misread that as 8086K. I think the 8600K would bottleneck you, yes. Uh, it's depending on the game, but I think it would. Um, it will depend on the game, though. I thought you said 8086K, which is probably going to be a lot, a lot closer to the high end. Okay, Phoenix7289 says, Hey, Steve, I've been wondering lately uh, how far back are we? We're one hour back, so I need to read a bunch of these in succession to, to kind of catch up. Uh, wondering lately, how and when did you get started in PC hardware? Uh, did you ever take college courses for the subject? Didn't see anything on this on the website. Uh, cheers, and then signs it, Alex. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for the super chat. So how and when did I get started with PC hardware? I built my first system in, uh, it was a Pentium 4. I think that would have been 2000, uh, it was 2003, 4 or 5, I don't remember. But somewhere in that three-year range. And that was with a... I think I got the highest end GPU I could at the time, and it was a Radeon something. Um, X800, X1800, one of those two. 512 megabytes of RAM. I, I specifically remember picking the higher end one, the, the more higher capacity one. Uh, no particular reason. The number was higher. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, and as I've described in videos in the past, a lot of the time when you have that kind of customer, bigger number better. So. Um, I don't actually know. I never looked up reviews to see if that capacity made a difference or not. So that's around when I started and then built several computers in that time. Uh, afterwards, started GN as a website only, GamersNexus.net, in about 2007, officially online in 2008. And we were doing just game reviews. And then I got into hardware probably, like hardware coverage. I was already building PCs probably around 2010, I think, is. Uh, I built my last, the last PC that I built as not a business was about 2009 or 10. And um, that's when we started covering hardware because I bought a bunch of parts to build a computer and was like, oh, it'd be cool to, to write about this. So that's where I got started. Did I take college courses? No. Uh, I'm a dropout. I took only English classes, basically. Um, I've done some professional work, but uh, no, no formal education on it. Just a bunch of, you just kind of, hack job it together until you learn a lot and really the way to learn in this industry if you can do it is to kind of go to a bunch of trade shows and meet people and then learn from them from engineers it's a lot more targeted knowledge uh, so I probably lack some foundational stuff but I mean in terms of knowing things I need to know I've, I've also learned a lot more advanced stuff than you'll learn in a college class so there's two different approaches to it but uh, mine was much less formal and more built around uh, asking professionals to educate me one-on-one -on -one rather than going through classes. And I, I personally find that much more effective. So that was stable. Did we have a clock? Yeah, it was 30 offset. Not a super high offset, 
looks like we were averaging 2055, 2070 is pretty high for that briefly, but 2030 looks like the true average. Let's do some uh, memory tuning. Let's run that. Let's see. He went to Overclock Academy. <laughs> uh, water block it. Yes, that is something I want to do for sure. I'm waiting for water blocks to come in. Will you have the EVGA XC3 Black reviewed? I don't know if we'll review the, the Black Edition. I th if I remember correctly from their naming scheme, I think that's normally... Uh, I think that's a baseline model. I don't know if that's... I think that's below gaming. I think it's gaming and then OC and then... Well, they've gotten rid of some of those. Now they have XC3 and FTW3. But... Uh, I'm not sure we will um, we will be looking at the XC3, but I don't know which one it is. Uh, okay. Let's see. Really interested in the noise level. Definitely. I am as well. We're going to be testing that formally for the reviews. I can't do that in a stream for a number of reasons. not controlled enough here. But we will be testing that on all three of these cards and uh, getting you answers on that. Let's do memory tune while this runs, and I'll do some super chats. Uh, let's offset by 500 and see if it dies. And we're going to increase the fan speeds too. How does it sound at 100%? Is it bearable for stream? Because that'll give us a bit more frequency. Okay. <sighs> Just checking on. Uh, Checking on the chats. What do you think this launch says about NVIDIA as a company? Well, I mean, clearly they, they killed it on the product side. So that's good. It's improved from the 20 series. Um, they definitely know they need more inventory, but that's tough. Steve, are you going to activate channel memberships? Not right now. It, I have a hard enough time keeping up with Patreon. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus if you want to support there. Uh, how about the Kingpin card? Excellent question. I am supposed to be getting one of those, is my knowledge right now. Um, if you don't know, the KP cards are the ones that we typically will put under liquid nitrogen. There's still stuff in here. Let's get rid of that. Typically put those under liquid nitrogen. And... Um, uh, that will be with a larger closed loop liquid cooler this time too. So I will be working on one for sure. I just don't know when yet. So for sure power limited right here as expected. What's it drawing? Board power draw 393, 399, 400. So we've got three pins. We could, we could force more through there, but we would need a different BIOS or a power mod. Uh, that'll be for this weekend. And we're running about 2010, 2025. That's pretty good frequency, but I was hoping for higher. I'm, I'm still looking for a card that'll do higher than that. Uh, maybe the Gigabyte one will get us there. I don't know. I don't have a huge amount of faith in it. But So 500 is stable. Let's try 600. Check on the Super Chats. Got a couple store orders I'll shout out quickly. So a uh, large mod mat. That's on back order right now. But uh, Adam from Pennsylvania picked up a large mod mat. Uh, signed. Thank you very much for that, the autographed version. We have those listed on the store on store.cameraxis.net. That's the service I'm working on right now. This one's been in, in the field, so to speak, for, I don't know, maybe three years now, two years, three years. And uh, it's uh, a beast. Protected the table from a hell of a lot, especially when Joe's here. He tends to slam things. Uh, so he is, he's, he's not. Joe often complains about not knowing his strength. And you'll see that when he works on computer parts. And you'll see that in the comments when he works on computer parts, where people are like, how is that memory still functional? So he'll be in this weekend. But uh, yeah, thank you for backwarding the mod mats. We have not been able to keep these in stock for like three years now, because uh, they're expensive. I need the money from the orders to make more of them. So uh, thank you for picking that up. Shout out the newest one. Luke from uh, Michigan. Picked up a wireframe mouse mat, which is low inventory, but is in stock and shipping right now. And a Metro Station poster. Thank you. Let's do one more. Wireframe mouse mat went out to... Oh, man. I, I wish I could pronounce all names always. Uh, let's go with... Let's go with Lahiru uh, from Virginia. Thank you. Okay. 
So super chats, questions people have. Um, Pro Pro Procopius Jones says, any tips to overclock? Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be a serious overclocking question. Any tips to overclock my newly long hair? Uh, I normally have it at stock length, but human malware put an end to that. I, I like seeing, you can tell when someone's not new to the channel because they, they know to use that phrase because we're afraid of uh, YouTube. Uh, but human malware put an end to that. P.S. My 1080 Ti stays because I wait for future cards. The 1080 Ti is excellent. Like it's, I've said it before, but it's one of those cards where, I mean, 3080s maybe change my opinion a little bit, but you don't really see NVIDIA making a lot of those because it was almost too good at the price when it came out. And I think that really constrained, we're going to 550, constrained what they were able to put out and impress people in the 20 series. So that is an awesome card. Absolutely stick with it if, if it's uh, still serving you well. Um, overclocking hair, uh, I would say probably try, try, try some different thermal pastes. You want one with a higher conductivity uh, for hot days, but you might want one with a lower conductivity for uh, higher humidity. Someone's, someone's going to put thermal paste in their hair, and that's going to suck. Don't do that. Uh, Aperva uh, Shukla, $5. Just got a mouse mat as well. Keep the AIB reviews coming. Yeah, definitely. As soon as uh, we've got to do a whole lot of testing tonight, I'm going to be testing these for acoustics and thermals. So we're working on the reviews. This is just kind of the live overclocking, like sort of binning session. So I set to 550. We'll see if it survives this time. It died at 600 offset memory. We could try going higher too. Sometimes if it dies at like 600, you might have more luck at 640 or even 700, depending on the memory straps. What custom card can OC the most? That is what we are partly trying to figure out. Uh, Stone asked that in chat. So we are working on determining that. Um, I'm, I mean, I'll have like kind of an answer here today, but for the formal answer where we really commit to what we're saying, you're gonna have to check back for the reviews. But we can at least get a hands-on practical uh, determination um okay does gamers nexus ship to malaysia yes we ship internationally uh okay let me catch up on these you got yours got yours mustangs by matt i actually just picked up the the packages mustangs by matt sent us to our p.o box uh twenty dollars thank you just picked up an asus strix 2080 super for super cheap he says love it when new gps get released because I can upgrade my hardware. Uh, Mustangs by Matt says, PS, got my Patreon teardown cube, thanks. Did you get the uh, the Mark Nine tricorder? <laughs> Good luck with the OCs. I guess so, I have the boxes in my car, but I haven't opened them yet. Um, just picked that up earlier today, so I think, it, I think we probably have it. I look forward to opening it. Okay, uh, so it did crash. So we're no good on 550. Let's, let's go back down to 500, ma'am. I'm gonna write down some notes to say that uh, 550, actually, you know what, let's try one more. Let's try like a, let's try a 620 and see if we have better luck with different uh, configurations. So, like I said, sometimes higher will actually be more stable on memory. Memory's kind of screwy. So I write down my notes. This is a 105 power and we've been in what? The 2010 range, 2025, 2050. But on average, 2025, 2010, 2050, and I'll say average, rough average, mind you. That was a core offset 30, mem offset of 500 has been good. I'm gonna write down 600 and 550 fail. So I, I'm writing all this down that way. I don't try these settings again later and forget that they we already confirmed they fail. Okay, so that's good. And then we'll run uh, a bench. That Ellen Teapot's still freezing over. That's how you can really tell the temperature gradient after pouring liquid nitrogen into it in an ambient temperature room. Let's see if it dies. If we see artifacting, that is also a sign that it's pushed too far, but uh, it's not hurting it, it's just not gonna be stable. Okay, uh, what's chat saying? Do you have an MSI Ventus? Um, no, I don't right now. Uh, I think that's what I'm maybe trying to get, but we do have the, what is, is it, the Trio? I think it's the Gaming X Trio. That one's coming in. 
Philip Zeister, have you gotten a chance to try out Cryonaut Extreme yet? No, uh, I'm actually really looking forward to it. So Roman Derbauer um, has told me about, he's been working with Cryonaut Extreme for, I don't know, probably over a year now. And uh, it sounds like it's improved a lot. So I'm looking forward to it. I don't have it yet. I don't know if, I don't think it's production yet. He's got some other cool products coming out. Um, I guess I won't, dis I won't disclose them because I don't know if, if he's, I think he's probably talked about it, but uh, I'll keep my mouth shut just in case he hasn't. But he has some cool stuff coming out. Okay. It's still running at 620. I do feel like as soon as I look away, it's going to crash, though. But that is better than the previous one. Uh, Mr. Super Duper. If that's, you might want to apply for a job based on that name alone. The name Mr. Super Duper 5000. You know, NVIDIA might need some marketing people in the future. And after the super line, and with that number 5,000, which is in fact 2,000 higher than 3,000, you might get a job for their next next generation GPUs. They'll be the, third, the, the 50, 80 super dupers. Uh, is there a reliable way to see how much VRAM is being used for the people afraid that 10 is too low? Great question. As you likely heard earlier, I was saying no. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, with like GPU-Z, it's just not really telling you. Maybe someone, someone did send me a message about a tool that we might be able to try, a developer side tool. So I'm going to try that out. Maybe my answer will change to yes after we try that out. I think maybe you might be able to kind of figure it out with like uh, a game engine, like Unreal Engine. But um, you know, that doesn't really tell you what each game is doing, unfortunately. So I, I don't have a great an answer for that. The best way to figure it out is honestly just to run something at the resolution like 4K that you want and look at the frame time plots. And if you're not seeing a bunch of this with high excursions from the mean, then, uh, then you're good. Um, we did not see that except for in an unstable overclock, which doesn't really, that's not the same issue. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Mifta Jafari says, I have a decent 700 watt power supply. Do you think FE3080 will pull through the i7-9700K factory uh, OC to 4.6 gigahertz? with little or no OC and system idle is 60 watts. 9700K, I don't have your voltage, unfortunately, in this question. So I think the question is, is 700 watts enough? Um, I think so. It's gonna be inefficient, but I think that should be enough without knowing your voltage for the CPU. Uh, I think that should be enough, but you're gonna be on the, on the slightly less efficient side of the curve. And that does mean that you're not gonna have a zero spin for the power supply, it's, it's probably going to be spinning the fan pretty regularly. Uh, TVG Games Co. says, I'm waiting longer to get a 3090 because I want the best chip and the bugs worked out first. Do you think the 3090 Ti will have 32 gigabytes of memory? And then says 10 is not enough. Uh, I mean, maybe for professional workloads it's not, but uh, I am not sure. I've, I don't know if there's going to be a 3090 Ti. I think there might be a 3080 Ti. This was not stable, by the way. So we're going to call it 500 for stable. And... Um, Let's just run that and see what happens. So 3090 Ti, I, I'm not really sure that there's going to be one. I, I honestly have zero idea. They haven't told me anything. Uh, OK. 360 Entertainment, how long till 20 series cards will have a price drop? You know, unfortunately, a lot of the times when new stuff comes out in silicon, you don't really get much of a price drop. AMD has been the one shining exception with Ryzen. But AMD was also in a position where it really needed that cash flow because it was just it was so disadvantaged for so long. I think it was more willing to put stuff on sale. Intel, look at old Intel CPUs, you almost never see sales on those. Uh, same for GPUs a lot of the time. It's kind of difficult. Now they will get cut over time, but it's typically when they're in a head-to-head -head battle with each other, not with themselves. So I mean you would expect there'd be a price drop to dump the inventory, but I, I don't know that I'd bank on it necessarily. Uh, you would probably see that. I don't know. I don't think you're going to see that immediately in most instances because these aren't even staying in stock. So there's not much incentive for them to drop the prices. Once they're more regularly available, you'll probably see that. Uh, used might be a good opportunity for you. Some people were panic selling their 2080 Ti's for like 500 bucks, which you shouldn't do, by the way, because it's still a very good card. Uh, you don't get too tied up in that consumerism unless you really need the upgrade for like work or you're just unhappy with the system. But um, yeah, used might be a good option for you. Cazado, hi Steve, is there any information yet if NVIDIA's FEs 
are binned, and the board partners receive everything else uh, as they did that with the 20 series. I don't know that they did that with the 20 series, um, like in an officially confirmed way. Uh, there's always going to be variable silicon quality. With the 20 series, actually, with some of the reviews we did, I can tell you officially that they didn't do any bidding because we received some of the boxes like not from the usual offices. They're coming more from the supply side. So, uh, so those wouldn't have been pre-tested. But um, bend, uh, maybe. But clearly, we're not seeing much, much scaling, even in the 3080 FE. So I don't know that it matters a whole lot. Maybe for competitive overclocking, that might start to matter. But I don't have any information on that to, to state either way. Uh, let's see, this one is from the Globule Return. So I'm at 750 for Super Chats right now. It is currently 903. Uh, so we're trying to catch up. I'm probably going to have to cut these off at some point and just read through what we have. Because um, I don't want people to not have theirs read. How about an OCED FE card versus OCED AIB? Uh, both of the same custom water blocks on them. Yes. Uh, I mean, that would be fun. It's going to come down to who has the highest power target. That's a good score. That's, that's improved over previously. Cool. That's good to see. Not a huge percentage improvement, but improvement nonetheless. I'm going to run this one more time. God, why does that keep doing that? Um, so, yes, I am working on getting water blocks. That's something I'm interested in. Let me write this down. So this is a 30 offset core 500 mem, 12383. That is the highest score we've seen so far. The Asus Tough was 12294. It's the FPS. 57.33. Like I said, every every tenth of a point really starts to matter in this benchmark. Twelve three eight three minus twelve two nine four. Let's see the real difference between these. It's not going to be much. 0.7 percent, about one percent max potential difference between the two right now. But with uh, additional power mods, we may be able to go higher. I'm going to try this last test, and then we're going to move on to the gigabyte card, and that'll be the last one we're testing tonight. Let's get this out of here. Okay. Someone's Eternal Dreamer says that's a top 10 score, I think. Well, that's kind of sad because I'm mostly I'm trying to interact with chat and like answer some fun questions, and I'm just typing a few numbers in here. So we're not really in try mode yet. That's just a matter of, uh, of the lack of people who have these cards, really, is all that means. Uh, please, so Dan says, joined late. I want to know the summary of the results, Steve. Uh, come on, big dog, he says. Put out a summary for us. Well, just because you know my secret nickname, we'll, we'll put out a summary. Uh, so, so far I've done two cards. This fan's running 100% speed right now. I ran this at 100. That's not how we're really gonna do it for full review. Full disclaimer again is that uh, do not consider this stream as a determination of whose card is best. We're just kind of sorting through for the overclocking purposes. So what really matters for these is gonna be quality of life features like acoustics, the fan curve, uh, noise normalized thermals, so in other words, efficiency of the coolers. We haven't done that yet today. So I tested this one first. We put it in performance mode and then um, maxed out the sliders to the extent possible until they were crashing. And one sec. This thing has got condensation now, so we're going to move this over here so I don't lay down a video card in a puddle. Um, so scoring-wise, the... Asus card did a, a base score of 11,845, improved like uh, the top of my head, I think it was like 3.7%, I don't remember, but to, we used to do the math pretty quickly, but 12,294 was the final improvement. 90 megahertz core offset, uh, we saw the frequency increase, so it was 1905 to 1950 average originally, just eyeballing it, increased into the 2000, 2010 range, and then 600 mem offset was stable. Anything beyond that was not stable. And that's about the end of it for that one. This card is now stable at 500 mem. We're running 40 core, but it was 30 core a second ago. And our score here is 12383, to give you an idea. Um, I really need, the, uh, need to do some mods to these to push them harder, which we're going to do this weekend, as I said before. That gets caught up. OK. Um, so let's see. Cole Markland, $10. I use Adblock, but still want to support you Also have some money. Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, you know, I don't blame you if you use an ad blocker. 
uh, I very much appreciate that you recognize that it helps to contribute directly. That's why we have those, uh, those channels open. That's a good improvement again. Yeah, that's really, for a 10 megahertz bump, that's, that's pretty damn good. So we're seeing that score slowly crime, uh, crime, slowly climb. It's criminal how much it's climbing. 12,435. And that's without any crazy uh, LN2 or anything. So let me write this down, 540. Let's go ahead and try this at 50. It wasn't stable for stress testing, but if it's stable for benchmarking, that's all I really care about right now. Apply, we might be able to get the clock to like 525 on them too, which would help out a little bit. Port Royal and run it. Let's get rid of this again. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Have you tested flashing different V BIOSes? I will be to increase power limit. They're asking. Yes, I will be. Uh, coincidentally, from Criminal Gameplay, asked that. What were the best results so far? The ones you just saw. I think it was twelve four three five, something like that. Out of the thirty eighty cards, which one is your favorite in terms of aesthetics? I don't really look at cards that way. I think the most comical is the Zotac, like insane one we don't have here. Uh, I mean, being fully honest, like. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, EBJ, yours is clocking the best, but I'm not so sure about some of these decisions. EBJ is doing an alternative for the red accent, so that was awesome of them to address that immediately. It was a huge community complaint. So you know, this, there's a red accent over here on the front of the car. It looks like a Batmobile. Uh, so that's going to be fixed, but you know, I'm still getting this. They've offset the center fan down 10 millimeters, which is supposed to help thermally. I I don't know if they're really just trying to accommodate the EVGA name. I'm not really sure how much that helps thermally. Not a great way to A-B test it, but you know we can test it for something coolers. So um, I guess the end effect of, of this plus the like weird, like whatever that is, it just looks kind of like it's, it's, it's like if you went to a house of mirrors and it has those mirrors that like distort your body so it's, it's like all ballooned everywhere. That's kind of what this card reminds me of. So. I don't know if that answers your question of which card I think looks the best, but that's definitely an opinion on that card. Uh, it is clocking the best though, so you can't really fault them for that. This is like very standard, kind of bog standard, uh, you know, big rectangle and uh, black shroud. The, the tire marks on the back I could do without. This is the Asus Tough. This is just like, it's kind of weird to me. I get what they're trying to convey. They're like, it's so tough, I guess you could run over it with a very small car, but uh, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of weird to look like the video card got run over. So aesthetic's not really something I typically talk about, but that's kind of my thoughts on those two. Gigabyte one, I, it's just like, again, kind of standard. This one's a gray rectangle, so that's flashy and different. Um, it's kind of strange to me some of the accents the partners decide to do. They're just, they try to refresh it and keep it new every generation. But like this one's got this acrylic thing up top. Kind of reminds me of the EVGA acrylic last generation. I don't know that this really adds a whole lot. And a lot of the time you're looking at the, this side of the card anyway, when it's socketed. Um, do they get the, oh, they do get that right at least. It's, it's nice to see board partners figure this out lately. They've got the text oriented correctly for standard installation. So there's that, but. This is kind of interesting. I'll have to look into why this is here, I guess, because it's uh, got some gaps in it. So I'm curious about that. Like, not in an airflow sense, but just like a, I don't know if maybe it's, it looks like it might be for kind of keeping the cables in one place. 12,460 for that one. Is that an increase? I think it is. Let me take a super chat. We're way behind the super chats, guys, but I'm doing my best to catch up. I'm trying to like actually give some depth to some of the discussion which means that we're falling way behind, but I don't want to just like burn through them as fast as I can. Uh, sometimes we have to do that though. So Robert Mal says, do you run a deep loaded windows for benchmarking? We will be this weekend. I'm not right now, uh, but with Joe, with Stepanzi, he's building a custom OS before he comes up here and um, he will deep load windows for that. Get rid of some of the services, things like that. Flying Emu says, I wonder how many NVIDIA employees are watching your stream right now? Definitely a few of them. Hello. Uh, definitely a few board partner employees too. But um, that's always kind of fun. Sometimes I get messages in the stream where they're commenting on things I say. 
Uh, so 12, 4, 60, that was at a 50. Let's try this at 60. I mean, it was crashing in TSE, but it doesn't seem to be unstable in Port Royal. Maybe, maybe 60 will be. But that is better than we were seeing in Time Spy Extreme. Yeah, so that's an improvement for sure. 50, 500, okay, cool, nice. Uh, Anton, Anton Johnson, oh, sorry, Johansson, or Johansson, because uh, it's Swedish donation. Uh, do you have any way to detect if the oxygen levels go too low from releasing too much nitrogen? I uh, love your content. Thank you. So you can definitely buy uh, meters and sensors for that, but to just this is referencing the liquid nitrogen containers for anyone who's confused by that question. So this is a very large open space. Our studio, it goes back that way quite a bit, it goes this way quite a bit, but um, large open space. Actually, I do have an answer for that. Uh, too. And we can run AC, we've got active ventilation, so we're good. That said, if you really ever were worried about it and you don't have like just an O2 sensor of some kind, a yeah, really good O2 sensor is fire. And uh, if you can't light the torch and there's gas in it, then there's probably not oxygen. So that's another good way to check. But yeah, just make sure if you do anything with liquid nitrogen that you fully research the sort of the safety measures to take. Uh, Phoenix Ranger, one dollar, no message, thank you. Nick Mosley, always have to support you guys when I can, and good luck in the coming weeks and months. Thank you, it's gonna be crazy this year. For vertical GPU, is the reference cooler a bad idea on the 3080? Uh, good question, I've seen this a lot. A couple ways to do vertical GPU. Some cases do it really well, like the SL600M, where they position it somewhat far away from the motherboard and you've got bottom intake maybe. Uh, the cable mod vertical GPU kit is also extremely good, but some cases that position it really close to the glass, that's bad. Uh, but that's not necessarily because the the cooler blowing back into the motherboard. It's more because your intake is smashed against glass from a couple millimeters away. So is it a bad idea? If you have good airflow in your case, it shouldn't really matter, especially if there's bottom intake. Um, remember, th so something to point out here, and I think a lot of people forget, is if you have a card mounted, socketed into a board. Sorry, let me mute my mic. That's a, that's a pressure release rudely interrupting me. It's normal. It's just uh, an off-gassing. Give me one sec to mute my line. OK, sorry about that. I'm getting uh, less jumpy each time, though. Now it's just like, well, that was rude. Uh, so unfortunately, the test failed. but. That seems to be our limit. So, oh yes, this was actually a somewhat important demo. Uh, so card sockets into the case like this typically. And it, a lot of people are, are, are concerned that with an FE card like this, air is blowing straight into the uh, chipset or the M.2 device. You have to remember that with a card like this, these fins, they're oriented like this. The air doesn't go that way when the fins are like this. It's going into the motherboard, and the, the rest of it's coming out. That FE design, uh, like this, it's going into the motherboard, the rest of it's going out. So, I mean, I'd have to test on literally a case-by-case -case basis. There are millions of combinations you could test, and I'm sure you can find some where it would be bad. But that said, if you're vertically mounting in a case that is already a good vertical mount, which is rare, then I think you'll just kind of, based on experience, I think you'll probably be fine. Um, so yeah, you're, keep in mind, you're already exhausting heat into the board. And the board's not particularly thermally sensitive. Chipset can be, depending on the chipset. Uh, M.2 can be, depending on how hard you're running the drive. But um, you've already got a, a, a hot video card right above it with potentially vertical fins. So hopefully that helps. That's going to be our limit, I think, for this one. I'm pretty happy with that. That's the best score we've seen out of the two so far. 60 was just unstable. We're going to need some power limit or... Uh, some nitrogen stuff to get that better. I'd love to just take a shroud off and do liquid nitrogen tonight, but I do need to test them fully stock before we disassemble them. So I'm gonna swap cards. Okay. Hammer Tough 3080 for max views. Well, I mean, if it can get run over by a car, I can guess I can take a hammer. Uh, run over it with a very small car, someone says. Someone's, people are saying bonk, 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 bonk. I would go do that, except I don't want to trigger it to go off again. Sometimes that will happen. 
Did they just fill that LN2 tank? Yes, uh, today actually. We just got that filled. So that is why it's off gassing like that. Um, it's a pressure release valve. Okay, switching to another card. Let's see, Super Chats. Uh, I'm at 753 and it's 917. Doing my best here. Thank you, sir, for doing the research for us. Uh, definitely. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. 3D benchmarking is probably my favorite out of the overclocking stuff we've done. Jacob Melton, watched your video about AIOs with pumps at the top of the loop. And now, yeah, now I can't help but notice that with the rattle on the table, your AIO pump is at the top of the loop. Yes, uh, I mentioned that earlier. So for a temporary bench like this, or for YouTubers, for example, who are doing temporary builds, uh, you're fine. It's not like it's running very hard like this either. Um, plus, this is brand new, so it's not going to be low on uh, liquid yet. But if this were a permanent setup, I would sit this on top of a box like that, probably. And then that would solve that problem. There you go. Fixed. I don't know if that's, that makes people happier or angrier. Sitting on top of video cards. Where is it? Okay, nice. Uh, next one. Wishbone. Oh, is it going to be... Oh, is it not actually about Beetle Adventure Racing? That's rare. Wow, that might be the first time Wishbone's not asked about Beetle Adventure Racing. Wishbone says, I bought your one mil shirt. Am I able to somehow get it signed by uh, you and the team, Bearded, Buildzoid, Devourer, Kingpin, if I pay to ship the shirt uh, to get it signed? Uh, we don't really have a good way to intercept the order. <sighs> you know, Wishbone, you've been donating to our streams for like years now, but if you, you're going to have to like timestamp this. That's going to be a pain. If you like timestamp this, <laughs> what I'm saying right now, <laughs> send it to our support team after you get the shirt, then, um, you know, we can ha arrange to have you ship it back and I'll, uh, I'll at least, um, sign it just as a thanks for all the uh, Beetle Adventure Racing requests that you've had. You've probably given us like uh, like 50 to to $100 in requesting that meme. Uh, you're going to have to timestamp this and send it to support at gamersnexus.net and then uh, tell them to email me. Okay, so uh, Gunnar, I guess. Gunnar and a, I can't pronounce the last part of that name. Norwegian 20, I'm sorry. Uh, why does the EVGA have a sad... Yeah, have a sad mouth with lipstick. Well, I don't know. I don't think anyone can answer that question. Uh, ben Hewitt Lawn. Love your work, Steve. You overclock my heart, hashtag goat. I'll take, I'll take the, the goat naming for as long as uh, Linus's ultimate PC troubleshooting competition in the universe is still the only one in the universe. Uh, Skydiver, $5. No message. Sean D, I'm hearing memory overclock won't get you much. Something to do with how this gen handles memory errors rather than crashing. It does handle memory errors differently. Good good comment. I, uh, I forgot to mention that in the review. Uh, it is true. So they do handle memory errors differently. I'm not exactly sure the, the details. It's in the NVIDIA white paper, which is now public. And um, you could read about it to get some information on that. Definitely handles them differently, though. Did I hit the... So I hit the display input button on the monitor, or do I just need to restart it? Uh, let's restart it. Uh, Tom Kavalik, $50, thank you. Says, I've really been enjoying the more comedic elements of your recent videos. Uh, the Finn stack whisperer joke was hilarious and deserves a tip. Keegan, I think, was it you or Keegan? It was Keegan. It was Keegan. Keegan slipped in that reference in the, in the teardown. Uh, look how quick Andrew was to throw Keegan under the bus. Andrew's like, just in case it wasn't funny, it was Keegan. <laughs> yeah, that was in the teardown video. Um, so another 50 coming, thank you. I'm, uh, I will take all the Super Chats to where we are right now. I might have to put a note that we've, we've got to stop taking them, though, after this point in time, because we're never going to close the stream. Um, but I will get through the ones that are in there right now. Uh, so, OK, so we need to do a DDU. It's just refreshing itself because it's a new video card. So I'll be back. OK, DDU. All right, we're going to freak out a little bit more first. That's OK. 
I have the least faith in this one because I plugged it in briefly and I don't think it has a lot we can do with power. Uh, okay, let me update the on stream note. Um, no more super chats will be read after. You're going to have to do some time zone math. 9.22 p.m. Eastern. Okay. All right, um, that's the cat. So don't submit any more super chats. It's on the screen. Uh, I will get all of them. I see there's some, some outstanding ones, uh, but we're, we're quite a ways back right now, so I'm going to have to run through them pretty quick. I'll try to give full answers, though. Okay. Um, SkyDriver, 456.38 driver. Uh, I have to look at it when we reboot. It's not the most recent public one, but it's the most recent press one. And for this, they're all in the same thing, so that's what we need. JW Dickinson, my god, NVIDIA has Steve on speed dial. They fear the power uh, and must attempt to suppress it. Nobody you work with is named Judas, right? Oh, they fear the power tech, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think... Um, I, I think they probably had something else to ask about, but it was good timing when they called earlier. A better Biomed Channel says, thanks for investing the time into this research. I always appreciate your thorough videos. Well, I mean, thanks for donating to help fund it. Uh, this is going to become a much bigger content piece as we review each of them and then eventually do a roundup. But it's going to take me a while to kind of work through everything officially. This gets us a good starting point, though. I figured since they launched today, uh, talk about the designs a little bit. Can't anymore, because now we're using the cards as a stand. 456.16. Um, stay up late. That's a very literal name. It says, congrats on breaking 1 million subs, Steve. GG. Thank you. Uh, Tyler Tim. What does that say? Oh, fist bump. It's the uh, icon thing. Thank you. Exotic Simplicity, hello Steve, love the show, keep it up. Do you plan to do some liquid metal application? Uh, by the way, I'm waiting for a hair product. So um, we might, I might do liquid metal on the shunt resistors. I think I can show what one of those looks like for people who don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we may just solder one on instead though, but liquid metal is a little easier to reverse. Does this have, oh, this one's got uh, liquid metal on the shunt resistors, it's perfect. This is a 2080 Ti. So that right there, uh, that like it's kind of dull because it's been on there for over a year now. That is liquid metal, and then that's liquid metal. And if we probed the leg of this shunt resistor to the 12 pin on this cable, you would see that they are continuous. Same for this and this. So what that does is it tricks the video card such that it will um, allow you to draw more power into the card by uh, changing the resistance. If you do too much or if you solder a straight line, like just a copper wire, then you'll send the card into 2D clocks mode. So it'll be in the hundreds of megahertz. It'll be in safety mode. You remove it and restore it, you're fine. But that's why we don't do a straight line. You could do a piggyback shunt resistor, which we've done in the past. Those work the best. Uh, but they do require physically modifying the card in a way that's harder to reverse, but can still be re reversed. You can remove it. But if, if your soldering work is as uh, horrific as mine, then you're, you revert it, but people are still going to know. So it just depends on what you're doing. All right, let's reboot and get it running. OK. I thought you were going to save the best for last. Well, we'll see. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Level 100 Studios, $20, thank you. I was at Micro Center all night, 13 in line. They had 11 here in NYC, 11, man, in New York City. And you were number 13, man. Says, uh, forces me to get a 3090 next week. Always awesome, thanks for the work. Thanks for informing us, 11 in New York City. That's kind of brutal. Also being 13, man. Oh, I would be pretty pissed. Uh, Kyle uh, Cherist, five dollars. Do you have an N case M1? You could test the fit. I don't. I'm sorry. It would be really easy to do if we had one here, but I do not have one uh, to do a test fit with. I guess you can look at the dimensional specs and hope that they uh, hope that they tell the full picture. I can I can measure a few pieces of it if that helps. I don't know which one you care about, but that was 
8 p.m., so that's probably the EVGA card. All right, let's run Port Royal. We're going to get a baseline here. I'm going to actually just reset the defaults of this just to make sure there's nothing left over. But the fans aren't at 100%, so we know there's not. Just for safety, though. Default, kill that fully, and then run it. That'll give us baseline. Uh, we're catching up pretty well in Super Chats. Thank you for bearing with me. And uh, like I said, I, I try to answer these with like as much depth as I can, so it slows us down. But Dobie, ten dollars says Steve. If you haven't looked, check out what the scalpers that are price gouging the 3080 cards uh, that went out today. I saw that. I don't think any of those sales are going through on eBay. Like the seventy thousand dollar one. That's hopefully someone just bidding it up so that the scalper. I mean, they're not even like they don't. A lot of them don't have the cards. They're like selling the Best Buy pre-order. So I don't know if you buy it and then they promise they're going to change the delivery address or if they just ship it like a week later. But it's absolutely insane. It's, it's crazy that, I mean, it's crazy that ticket scalping is a thing too. But like video cards, you really? That's where we are? I guess any way you can make money for the people doing it. Uh, they probably, I wonder if some of them don't even know what the thing is. Uh, Call of Yoey says, hey, Steve New here. Do you think it's worth it to get one of these RTX cards for 1080, 240 hertz gaming? Well, I um, guess that depends on what you have now. If you don't have anything now, then yes, but maybe the 3070 might be enough for that. We haven't tested it. I don't have one. So if the 3070 is enough, then um, yeah, you might want to wait around a little bit. If you're only at 1080p, if you already have cards, well, I guess you just kind of run the games you want to play. They're all going to be different. Like Rainbow Six Siege, for example, so easy to run in the hundreds of FPS that you don't really need an RTX 3080 to do that. Uh, you could do that with 20 series. I, off the top of my head, you might be able to do that with a 1080 Ti too. So depends on the game. But um, if you're only at 1080p, I'd say maybe stick around for the 3070, see if you can save some money. Matthew Cottingham says, are you all getting 3090s to review? We will be. Uh, what sort of performance gain percentage over the 3080, if you had to guess? I'm not going to try and guess, because we're so close to just actually reviewing it. There's no point. It's just going to, someone's going to like only hear that part and expect something that may not be reality. I'm sorry, I'm not going to guess, but uh, we will know next week. Shannon Foreman, will my, will my stock 8600K be a good pair for 3080 at 1440? Should I OC my CPU? I do have an AIO. I think it's worth overclocking your CPU. Uh, keep an eye on, um, do look up some guides for the 86 and 87, and uh, make sure you're not setting the voltage too aggressively. But um, 3080, 1440, we were still GPU bound in a lot of scenarios, but we were starting to see CPU binds. So like Red Dead 2, still pretty hard GPU limit. Uh, however, Microsoft Flight Sim, at least at the time we tested it, very hard CPU limit, single thread. Apparently, there's an update as of like yesterday or today that fixes that. I haven't tested it yet, but if it's still the case, there's a score, by the way, baseline score for the Gigabyte Eagle, then, um, then you're going to be CPU bound. So it does depend a bit on the game. Uh, I don't think I would call an 8600K a good pair for a 3080, honestly. I'm a little bit concerned that in some games you're going to have issues with um, potential frame time consistency with the i5, but I have not actually checked it. So, okay, let me write this stuff down. So for a recap, the we're using them as a table right now, but this is the Asus Tough, uh, and then under it is the EVGA card, and um, that's a nice noise, isn't it? Uh, so this card, the Tough. The Tough did 11.845 baseline. We're a little under that here with 11.777. The EVGA card did 12.140 baseline. Uh, I think it's going to be a more expensive card, though. But that's because, as Jacob said on the phone when we were talking uh, to the stream, their power target is higher natively. And then this card, let's write these numbers down. Graphic score, 11.777. But that doesn't mean that's going to be where it stops. So we've got potential room there. 5452. I want to run this now again with GPU-Z running. And then we're going to check back after maybe a, the first minute and watch the last minute and gauge the uh, thermal frequency response. Windowed. 
Sensors, okay. Okay, got some more store orders. I'll try and shout a few out. Thank you again to everyone who picks stuff up on store.gamersaccess.net. Uh, like I said before, we have the limited edition gold foil shirt up there now for 1 million subs. Uh, we did these before for a different design, which is this one. This is the Polygon shirt, sold out in a couple weeks. Super popular design, but this was our most recent foil limited shirt. And if you're new here or you maybe haven't bought one before, uh, basically our goal with these types of shirts is put something out that's high quality, that's unique, that's limited, and then use the money we make from it to buy new testing equipment. So like the Schlieren Imaging, we can't, you can't just drop like five grand on a moment's notice without having the support from the GN store. And we have a really cool video coming up showing the, the airflow photography um, from the 3080. So thanks again for everyone picking that stuff up. Same for the mouse mats. I think we're down to a pretty low quantity at this point, but I need to double check. So wireframe mouse mats on the store. A lot of people bought them this stream. Thank you for that. Um, we're in the last couple percent of inventory remaining before we're going to be back on back order for these. So those are on store.gamersaccess.net, and thank you again for helping with that. I'm going to shout out like two orders, then go back to the interacting with normal chat and then super chat stuff. We'll talk about this along the way, like right now. Uh, so 1920, 1935, 1965. I'll get back to the chats in a second. This is almost over, though. So um, this is on the low side. This is more comparable to the tough, which isn't surprising. We'll have to overclock it to get more of that. 1740 was a big drop. Uh, it looks like we're averaging, oh, 1890, OK. So if I have to maybe eyeball it, I'd say we're in like the 1940 megahertz range. Temperature 62. Temperature target, uh, that's just what they set in vBio. So the fans will spin to meet that temperature. That doesn't mean like universally this cooler is this temperature, uh, because it's going to depend on firmware almost more than anything else, and then the cooler after that. Fan speeds, 1,400, 1,500 RPM. So we are power limited as expected for this card. That's that green line at the bottom. And uh, we can increase the fan speed to try and shave off some of the temperature, some of the couple degrees and increase our clocks. But 1890 to 1950 is kind of rough. That's not a, great, not a great starter frequency for overclocking. Doesn't mean it's bad, but it does mean it's limited. Uh, for perspective, again, you're often talking a couple percentage points change here, so it's not like world ending if you bought this card. Okay, uh, I said I would do two store purchases or a couple and then um, hop back over. I just happened to click on this one. Uh, Jeremy, aka Zeta, he's one of our, our moderators for the Discord, for the Patreon Discord. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Zeta knows he can get. Uh, being a moderator and dealing with the stuff he does knows he can just ask me for stuff. But thank you for ordering the foil shirt, though. And uh, Jordan from Calgary. Calgary is awesome. I haven't been in several years, but I really want to go back. Uh, Jordan in Calgary picked up a wireframe mouse mat. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, so it, yeah, it looks like we're in the 1920s, 1930s for core. Um, Let's let's try one more run with full pass, and we're gonna do just the power off. So maybe we're not. I don't know. This card has one. That's gonna not be great. What's the Hall of Fame scoring? Oh, okay. No Hall of Fame for us. Uh, I need this. Ah, yeah. There you go. Hundred percent. That's it. There's no, we can't, we can't increase the power target, so we will remain power limited. That's going to severely limit what I can do here without liquid nitrogen or something. Uh, and at that point, we're better off with a different card. So we're going to increase fan speed to 100. Let's see if it's bearable. And then we'll increase the clocks after that, but hopefully this gets us something. It's actually not too bad, considering the other noise we're dealing with in here. Uh, okay, let's do one more store purchase on store.gamersnexus.net. We had one just coming from Corey in California. Picked up a, a wireframe mouse mat. Thank you. Sorry I can't get to them all. I, I always try to do all the super chats. We did put a time limit on them. It's on the screen in uh, this corner, I think. And um, we had to limit those because we're going to hit a wall. So uh, any super chats after that time will not be read. But um, store orders I, I have trouble keeping up with too. I'm trying to keep up with like chat, super chats on the store. So thank you for uh, for your patience as I'm doing all of it. Let's look at the uh, normal chat. Someone says, don't buy that card, lol. 
I'm guessing that's because of the limited power offset. Uh, what other comments do we have? A couple Fs in chat. I guess paying respects to the card that can't increase the power limit. FTW3 is in the lead. Yes, someone's uh, recapping for people. FTW3 thus far is in the lead out of the three we've tested. Um, let's see. Someone says, okay, no eagle then. Yeah, so for... Um, uh, so for Gigabyte, the biggest hope we can have is that maybe they see this or they... I'm going to follow up with them and send some criticism. Hopefully, I don't know what the PCB quality is. I need to take it apart. If the MOSFETs can't really handle more power, then there's a reason they're limiting it. But if they can, then uh, last generation they weren't great about that. But if they can, we'll email them and say, like, you know, hey, maybe you could consider releasing a secondary BIOS for people to flash. I think this is a, this is a single BIOS. This is a single BIOS, not even dual BIOS on this card. That's kind of lame. Well, I don't know what it costs, but if it's, if it's uh, MSRP, I guess that's not completely out of touch, but uh, yeah, I would like to see more power on that. Let's see. Um, why no reviews for the MSI Ventus? <laughs> do you, like, the amount of time it takes to do a review. We spent like one to two weeks uh, on just the 3080 FE. So like, give everyone time. We're working towards it. It's, it's slow. They didn't send them out. I want to read this. It just came in. Technically, we have a thing on the screen that says no more Super Chats will be read after like 16 minutes ago. But um, Seferix sent in $100, which that's insane. Thank you. I, I hope you are. Uh, I, 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 wish, I wish you had a different message than this, but it is amusing. The message says, you don't have to read this. But I'm not going to fall for your tricks. I won't fall for that reverse psychology. I don't know if it's still reverse psychology if you send $100, but thank you for that. We, after the last week, like it's appreciated. These reviews were no, no easy task. Uh, okay, so 11858 is what we got just from a fan speed increase. That is from a reduction in temperature. That is part of the boosting algorithm. I don't know if algorithm is really the right word. Lookup table, 858 minus 11777. 7, 7. So that is 0.7% uh, uplift. So if you water cool it, maybe you'll get to 1% uplift from, from baseline. That's not super exciting. Okay, let's run a stress test, windowed, and look at, let's try and move around the numbers as much as we can. Let's see, catching up on everything, chats and everything. Uh, Uh, let's see. Reversed, reverse psychology. That's right. Uh, Big Banana Nana says, do you like cheese? Well, I'm American, so I think that answers that question. We've, we've got a bit of a reputation for cheese. Uh, saggy card era. All right, let me, let me, to be fair to Gigabyte here, I have not screwed this card in. I could put a, a screw right there, and it would it would straighten that. Um, I'm not saying it won't sag when it's in a case. In fact, it it might because there's not much of a structure here to support it. But the sag you're seeing here is just because I I didn't use a screw because I wanted to save some time. Okay, I launch precision and GPZ, and give me a second to get some of the stuff. Hey, could you talk a little bit slower in your vids? Sorry, I don't know. It's uh, uh, it's a balance because we're like trying to cram a lot into a certain amount of time. How hot are the rest of the GPU components? Good question. Um, so my process is I I'll, I will run each of these in our thermal bench in a controlled setup, full stock. I'm gonna run them at 40 dBA. I'm gonna run them under a couple other test conditions, and uh, 3D Mark, Firmware, a couple other things. Once all that is done, answering the question, what about the other components? Uh, I'm going to pull the whole thing apart, and I will be wiring thermocouples to it. And so between these partner models, what we're going to do is create a chart of partner model thermal, thermal, thermal performance uh, for the MOSFETs, for GDR6X. And that will allow us to see, does anyone have poor contact? Um, 
DDR6X TJ Maxx is about 110 degrees, so it's quite high. Uh, and then MOSFETs, you can run over 100 degrees as well. That said, you don't want to run it harder than you have to. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Someone said, John Toden says, Hey Steve, I visited my son in North Carolina and was able to try cheer wine. I thought it was quite good. I, I once saw Rise Against, the band, uh, at a, a local concert, and the front man, Timmy Gillerath, got on stage and in the middle of his set wanted to talk to the crowd and he told everyone, you know what I love most about North Carolina? And he said, cheer wine. And then he talked about how it's going to rot all of his teeth out. So that is our claim to fame, apparently, with touring musicians. Is uh, it's it's not actually wine. It's just uh, what would you call it? just cherry soda? Just cherry soda. It's got to be like 50 grams of sugar for a small can, though. Uh, okay, let's do let's do a 30 offset. I don't want to be too. I don't want to have my hopes set too high for this. Actually, let's, let's set this to default and look at, I oh know, we want 100% fan speed. Well, I might as well get both. I'm going to look at the, um, the frequency it's holding natively first. I was talking about unique drinks to areas. Picari Sweat is also very good. Horrible name, but a very good drink, though. Uh, we discovered that in Taipei. Uh, you could probably get it at, at like, uh, potentially Asian markets. If you're, if you're in the West, you might be able to find it there. It's kind of like a Gatorade, except the, the word sweat is in the name, which is maybe a little bit less appetizing. Not that Gator is particularly appetizing. Uh, so frequencies, we're, oh, I think I did this one already. Yeah, so let's boost it to 100%. We're, st we're still in the same limited range, like 1920, 1930 range. Upper 1800s, not great. 100% fan speed, let's see what that boosts us to with the temperature reduction. Uh, Paradoxical 247 in normal chat says, off the cuff thoughts on somewhat or more accurately poor overclocking results on this generation so far. To me, it doesn't seem like there's much room for enthusiasts to play around. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's so far we've been pretty limited. I'm hoping with the 20 series after the partner model launches, we saw several of them come out later with community available BIOS updates that did unlock more performance tuning. I'm hoping that happens again. Part of that will depend on NVIDIA. Part of that will depend on if they have three pins on the board. Um, I would like to see more. I think Joe and I will have no problem getting one of these further this weekend when we do our liquid nitrogen stream. But you know, that's not like normal enthusiast use. That's kind of more extreme. So normal enthusiast use, yes, I, I would say I'm a little bit disappointed for sure. Uh, the FE card I was hoping would be like at the low end, but uh, the FTW3 is the only one so far that's, that's kind of impressed me. And even then, the percent gain isn't huge. I think we can improve things, but I think it will require modding. So you're kind of cutting off part of that enthusiast audience when you say, like, out-of-box overclocking is not as good as it was previously. We like to see 10% or even higher gains from overclocks because that's where you start getting into the next class of cards. Uh, you could argue two things. You could argue they don't want to let you overclock too much because then it's too good. You don't need to buy the higher up. Or that you could argue that uh, they've pushed it so far, like with Ryzen, that there's no more room. But either way, yeah, it's limiting for enthusiasts. Temperature reduction to 52 with 100% fan speeds has only really kept us out of the 1800 range, but it hasn't improved much. We've got like 15 megahertz bump. No, let's do a 30 offset. So far, this is the worst performing card of the set, for sure. Let's see if that's stable while I catch up on Super Chats. Um, let's see. I think I got that question. I got that one. Ah, Mortem, $5. When did you last play a video game? Not long ago, actually. Uh, right before we got the 3080s in, I had some time to play some games. And I've been playing Planet Zoo lately, which is kind of like Planet Coaster, same developers, uh, reminiscent of um, Roller Coaster Tycoon, I guess. Except it's it's super detailed. Like the the amount of mechanics in the game, it's really impressive. And I kind of like the strategy games, uh, like RTS. I like a lot. So Three Kingdoms I played recently. Um, 
that was kind of my home genre for a long time. And then City Builder is a lot of fun too. But I just it's kind of fun to play something that makes you you think a lot and study the game. Uh, so yeah, we're 1950, 1965. I'm gonna write this down. That is an improvement. It is not impressive, but 19, 1965 range, 30 offset, 100% fan, 100% power, which is the max. Let's try a higher offset. Hopefully there's some room here. Let's try 50. You can see we're power limited, but we've still got some frequency tuning we can do. Someone says, Planet Zoo is fun. I agree. Oh, yeah, I used to play a ton of um, Age of Empires and StarCraft. Someone says, I would look forward to gaming streams. You know, I've seen Paul and Kyle doing those, and I, uh, I was reading a couple other chats at the same time I was talking. Um, I, I could definitely see wanting to do that, but at the same time, I don't, like, I don't want to turn literally everything I do into work. <laughs> it's already pretty close, so, like, uh, I don't want to have to be on camera for that, too. I respect the hell out of streamers who do it as a job. That's a very hard job. Uh, I guess we're kind of doing that here today, but not to the same extent as, like, the, you know, the game streamers who are doing it every single day. Okay, so we are 2010 megahertz to 2025. That is, in fact, a actually meaningful uplift from stock. Um, it's not that exciting, but it's closing in on where some of the other cards are. Let's try 60 megahertz and see if that helps us out. Which card is the best so far? So far, the FTW3 overclocked the best. Does PCIe 3.0 bottleneck? If so, how much? Not a ton. We have a video done on that, um, and uh, it'll probably go up tomorrow, I think. So the answer is not a ton, but there were some interesting applications where it was a little more noticeable than others. Uh, did you ever get into Civ? No, but I did get into Galactic Civilizations, which is a really fun game. Um, that's turn-based also, and uh, there's a lot of customization in it, upgrade paths. What's your favorite GPU overclocking software? Uh, Precision X1 I find the most usable right now. Afterburner is also very good. I don't really have an issue with either one. Okay, let me do some super chats. Those are the normal chats. We're about an hour back on these. We're catching up, though. Uh, Fan24 DRR, any signs of weird alien looking graphical artifacts? I'm planning on buying, oh, yeah, okay. I'm pl planning on buying a card in January after early adopters talk uh, and seeing what AMD puts out. I, that's a very responsible approach. Um, I haven't seen the Space Invaders artifacting yet for this generation. That was a, an early 20 series. If, if any of you missed it, that's the reference. I've not seen it, doesn't mean it doesn't happen though. We didn't see it in the original cards either. Uh, Katsu Jarvel, $20. What are your thoughts on the new news about the termination of SLI support? I was intending to go for SLI again on the 3090s, but now I'm not sure where this puts the small SLI set of users. Uh, I haven't seen specifically that news. Uh, it was pretty obvious they were trending down support over the years. They've moved it to higher and higher class cards, especially this generation. They cut off even the $700 card. So not surprised if that's the case. And it was the writing was on the wall, I think. Um, I would be careful about buying 23090s just for gaming. But if you're doing other stuff with them, like production, then there's probably still a lot of value there. Douglas Rumba, kind of a silly question. I wouldn't mind some GPU compute in my old server. How much of a kneecap do you think these would take on PCIe Gen 2? Uh, I think it will become much more noticeable at Gen 2 than Gen 3 versus 4. I think I tested the Titan. If you look up like Gamers Nexus Titan RTX PCIe bandwidth, I think I tested Gen 2 in that, but I'm not sure. If we did Gen 3 by 8, that would be the same as Gen 2 by 16. So that would give you the numbers you would need to figure it out from Titan RTX. So it's limiting a lot there, then you could extrapolate. Most things by Matt. Uh, AMD GPUs are better than people give them credit for. He says, I mean, what AMD lacks in GPU horsepower, it also lacks in driver quality, dot, dot, dot. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Like Intel after 10 nanometers was announced, period, space, sick burn. <laughs> you said it all for me. I, I, apparently there's nothing left for me to say in that because you've got the sick burn after it. That's all I had to say to it. Uh, 
I will give the 5700 XT credit for being extremely good hardware. And we didn't have a ton of driver issues, but I know that especially on like 4000 series Intel, people were having a ton of driver issues. We didn't run into too many of them, but um, let's try 70, let's try 80, let's push it up a bit. I'll try and produce a crash. Uh, so yeah, the GPU silicon was actually very good. It's just, it's unfortunate that uh, there's like, there's other issues sometimes. Uh, cheaps, or just, I don't know how to pronounce this, I'm sorry. 78. When will the large mod mats be available again? Your content is awesome sauce. No, that's that's Bitwit's content. His former name was awesome sauce. Uh, I think we have the date on the store. Medium is in stock and shipping now. Um, large is currently in production. We are expecting to receive them to our warehouse in January. So we've got a, a production delay and a shipping delay, but they are available on back order if you're, you know, you're willing to wait that long. Um, almost worthwhile gaming, $5. You're really selling it with that name. <laughs> anyway, to pay extra for you to sign a shirt. Uh, also, I use Afterburner. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, actually, because it works with a G19 keyboard to display on the screen. So, uh, yeah, G19, I actually completely forgot about. That was a that was a pretty cool, I, I want to say gimmick, but I don't want to like downplay it. But it was a really interesting time for keyboards where Logitech was experimenting with that stuff. G15, I think, too. Um, so, yeah, that's a... a a really good use of afterburner so then you have it on a small display we don't really have a good way for me to intercept shirts um we've got other items up there where there are signed options but like the problem is the distribution center is not here i have to go drive to it and uh, we don't really like there's no software to intercept certain orders because they're processing stuff uh independent of me so uh, sorry like yeah i don't know i i wish i had a great way to do it but uh, Nero Augustus, I love your work, but it's really tilting to see tech tubers with piles of cards everywhere while everyone else fights for a chance at ordering. I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, okay, but like, let me just put this in perspective, and I don't mean this in a condescending way, but this past week, I worked 60 hours in like two and a half days. So, you know, like almost every hour in those days. Uh, so like, Free cards, it's, it's an obligation, and it's, uh, it is not an easy one. So I don't really know how to respond to the it's tilting to see tech tubers with video cards because it's our job to test them. So, um, you know, what, what do you want me to do? Like, we've done this. Uh, I've been doing this for 13 years now. I've sacrificed a lot to be awake, to do all this stuff all the time, and that's what you get when you do that. But it's not like I'm going home and using them, right? They're, they stay here, we test them. That's the job. So it's not like I get personal use out of it. I, I hope that maybe puts some perspective onto it. Uh, I don't think you should feel like tilted uh, because I, like if I wanted a card personally, I would be doing the same thing as you and trying to buy one. I wouldn't be asking for one because it's not worth the work uh, for personal use. But hopefully that gives perspective. I'm thinking getting the Asus Strix 3080 when it's available, but have debated on other cards. Not sure yet. We're supposed to get one into review. Um, I don't know when yet. They don't have a timeline. Uh, if it's not available, you know, in the near, f I, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not available in the near future because it's probably going to be a custom PCB that takes a little longer. Nvidia didn't give the board partners much time. This thing's not crashing, and I think it's because it's so power limited that this is doing like nothing at this point. Um, so there we go. I think uh, I was talking to some people earlier and a lot of the custom cards you should start seeing show up in October. Um, so maybe the Strix will show up in that line of things. Let's bring this to one, let's do 100. Let's do a memory offset of 500. And then let's do a Port Royal run. I've been kind of lax on this GPU because we got such good results on the FTW3 before it, and this one's power limited. Let's see if that's stable. Maybe that'll help out the scores a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to review the high-end cards as well. So hopefully we'll be able to help you out with if it's worth it or not. Someone's laughing, saying it's not worth the work. Yeah, so I mean, again, like you're basically literally killing yourself to review the card. Not worth the work to me. Maybe just to you. Uh, we've got like 
This stuff is worth it. But what I'm saying is if I personally want one, it's not worth asking for an obligation um, to review something to then take it home and use it. We just we do it for business, and that's kind of it. That's the start and the end of it. I'm not really a consumer of the stuff we review, which I think makes me a better reviewer. Uh, let's see. Kagon, okay. Kagon Postal, I think is how that's supposed to be your head. Just got back from the bar drunk as hell. What a nice surprise. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that if you look at the EVGA faceplate, which is currently in use supporting this uh, radiator, then being drunk as hell, you, you, might, you might be a little confused as to whether the faceplate is actually all bent in and weird looking or whether that's the beer goggles. And I'm going to let you try and figure that out because I haven't yet. <laughs> that's the that's EVGA card. Uh, oh, we should show the um, thing people were upset about earlier. This EVGA was telling us, uh, if you missed it earlier, that red part right there, that's supposed to be swapped out later for... Uh... Sorry, that's the, that's the pressure release on the liquid nitrogen again. I want to mute my line. It'll stop in a second. Oh, it's done. Okay. It's getting lower pressure now. I didn't know it was on the other side, actually. That's even worse, I think, on that side, but at least it's not visible. Okay. All right, so are you going to review any MSI cards? Yes, we will be. That's still running. That's pretty. That's better than I expected, honestly. Uh, what do you expect from RDNA 2? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to wait and see on that one. I haven't really heard a lot. Uh, sometimes we hear a little bit more in advance. OK. Um, let's see. Where did we stop? I'm almost through these super chats. Uh, these are from like almost two hours, no, hour 45 ago, but we're getting through them. And I tried to read all of them. We've got that note on the page not to submit more because I, I had to put a stop to it. I do see another 100 come in, but I'll try and get that one. Yeah, so f France Cadet, guys, I've got, there's people sending more questions in. The text on the screen says like no more super chats, please. I'd, I want to answer them. I don't want to leave you hanging, but I am going to have to end the stream at some point. That's why we have the cutoff on them. Uh, 12218 for the score. That's a big uplift, but it's not super impressive. Uh, 12218 and 56.57. What is that for percent increase? 12218, 11, 3.7%. Seven, seven, seven. So that is actually a big percentage increase. However, it gets it to about, it gets it just under the where the tough was for a quick overclock. And it gets it 220 po 240 points under where the FTW3 was. Uh, France Cadet said, should I get the 10900K with 3080 for best performance? 10.6, uh, 10.7, 10, same thing. Either one of those is fine. You can overclock the 10.6 and 10.7, and you'll be at the same place as the 10900K. But yeah, that would, that would maximize your performance, definitely. Um, especially lower resolutions where you're less, uh, less GPU constrained. Let's see. Aquin Starbeat says, I have a 3600X and 5600 XT. I get repeated green screens and GB artifacts. Is my power supply too low, 450 watts, or is this a driver issue? Uh, top of my head, you might be cutting it close on the power supply. Normally, power being low should manifest in other ways. That sounds like maybe a GPU issue. Try downclocking your memory on the GPU. Go download some overclocking software, or actually it's AMD. Use AMD's overclocking software that they build in and um, try uh, downclocking your memory, see if that helps out. So that was a 500. Let's see if 700 will run. Maybe this has like magic memory even though the rest is not crazy. Time spy extreme, windowed mode. So we're gonna just try 700 megahertz offset. I kind of expect it to crash. Oh, that's cool. Brian Oliver in the normal chat says, uh, someone on Reddit said that the store manager, I guess that maybe wherever they were buying cards, gave out donuts and coffee to those waiting in line. I, yeah, that's super cool. Like, especially because a lot of those people are probably not gonna get a card. So uh, they definitely don't need to do that, but that's, uh, that's, that builds loyalty for the store, for sure. Is there a way for me to like turn off Super Chats partway through? I don't want to have a bunch of people mad that we're not going to read the rest of them. 
I don't think there is, or I would. Uh, but I'm gonna get through what's here up till 9:22 Eastern. Is that running? Yes. Um, for now. Resm3 says, "Sorry, I'm new to PC gaming, but by any chance, can you tell me why some games like Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare shows normal CPU usage, but only four, zero to four percent GPU usage in my taskbar?" Wow. Uh, zero. <laughs> I don't think it should show zero. Maybe because in, so. In, try a different monitoring tool. Try like GPU Z. It might be better for this. Um, it's possible that what you're seeing is actually, uh, where is it? It's possible you've got it set up. Maybe you like clicked around some of this stuff or I don't know if it's configured a weird way, but if you like click on GPU these days, you're going to see here, it thinks it's only under 20% load and this is uh, 3D and this is copy. This is encode. This is decode. So maybe you have it set to a bunch of things that it's not really doing. But if we click around enough, eventually you'll find like where there's some additional work going on. And sometimes it's not going to be like security. I wouldn't expect to be doing anything. Graphics one, there you go. So if you clicked on this, I, actually, I bet this is your problem. Uh, try it, try GPZ. It'll be much easier for you. But this is kind of good for everyone to know if you're not aware of it already. You see 24% utilization, right? But um, we are still GPU bound. We're at 100% for graphics one. We're at, I don't know what that is, 23% for 3D. Is there a graphics two? No. CUDA, not in use. Uh, compute, 26%. BR, not in use. And then copies are not in use. So hopefully that is useful information for someone. It is running with a 700 offset. That's better than we've seen on the others. So good memory and bad um, power target, unfortunately. But hopefully there's a better BIOS. Okay. Uh, do you do VR benchmarking? No, we did a long time ago. It was a really cool content piece, and I really was proud of the work we did. But it's super hard to do VR benchmarking. Uh, are you planning to do airflow testing with custom cards? Probably. Probably will be. Okay. Uh, let me try and get through a bunch of these quickly for a second to catch up. So, Chris L. How does VRAM change with VR headsets with two 4K screens? My Reverb G2 is coming out. I play Combat Flight Sims. It's 10 gigs still enough. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Your resolution is a lot higher. Uh, bandwidth is going to matter the most still. So, GDR6X might benefit you more than like two gigs on something slower would. But, um, I have not tested that, so I can't give you a firm answer. My instinct tells me that you're probably fine because it's probably a memory bandwidth thing. But uh, I haven't tested VR, just like I said, in a long time. Uh, Zalbag Wolf, $10, no message, thank you. Patrick G, Steve, can you perform testing on actual memory use versus allocated or allotted in the cards? I will try to find a good way to accurately do that. Um, most of the tools are not accurate for that. This is actually really good memory. It's a shame that the the BIOS is so limited on this. I, I'm going to email them and see if maybe we, I don't, well, I don't know how good the VRM is. So maybe that's not a good idea. But if the VRM can handle it, this might actually be a really good overclocker because of the memory. So it's a sleeper card. Surprise me with the memory. Uh, let's see. Doug, this. Uh, he, sorry, such a failed day trying to get a card of my own. I know I tried to get one too for uh, to have another one in to, to work on, but I have no luck at all. Um, yeah, sorry. I, we've got a video coming out on that that will hopefully help you with a few timelines. Tyler Tim, 999, no message, thank you. Leadmaster, 537, Rip J, when? Uh, soon, I guess. I don't know. We have the tools for it. Uh, Zachary Santer. I love the charities you choose. If I order a shirt right now, you sign it for me, please. Sorry, no, there's, I have no good way to do that. Um, it's it's just logistically very challenging to do that, uh, except for things where we've already set it up. Uh, Origin XT, and and thank you by the way for uh, for liking the charities we choose to work with. If anyone's curious, Eden Reforestation Project for reforesting. Um, Cat Angels we worked with, and then the. Uh, uh, who else did we work? We did some stuff for St. Jude's a while ago with EBGA. 
And then there's one more. I'm blanking. Oh, two more. The um, South Coast Wildlife Rescue in Australia and Adelaide Koala Hospital and Wildlife Hospital uh, back in January, February. Okay. Uh, Origin XD, are the mouse mats cleanable with a little bit of warm water and dish soap? Yes. Um, you can also try, if you've got like a thermal paste spot, especially on the black part of the mat, you can probably just blast it out of there with some CRC that's pretty full. You just like, psh, and then it'll, it'll remove it. Uh, shop brush works really well for small debris, like metal shards, stuff like that. Uh, warm water dish soap works well. Haas, uh, Swayer PR, $50, no message. Thank you. Uh, especially without a message, that's, I appreciate it for sure, but I would have been happy to answer something. Dale Johnson. Testing Fuma 2 and Optimus Foundation soon. Uh, still busy building my studio though. Congrats on one mil. I'm still not live. There's a lot of smoke in California, so limited work for the week. Yes, I've heard about that. We were talking with um, uh, some people based out there earlier and it sounds kind of crazy. So uh, as far as your, your Optimus Foundation, that sounds cool. Fuma 2 I haven't tested. And uh, enjoy building your studio. This is... We'll see. I'm kind of holding my breath on if, we don't know if this is stable in Port Royal yet. This is actually, like, the, the GPU clock is not really that good, but the memory is looking pretty good. I'm just letting it sit a little while, because, yeah, there you go, because I was pretty sure it was going to crash. So let's go back to 900, and let's see if we can survive a Port Royal run. That might actually be enough to pick it up to FTW3 performance, even without the big core OC. So that would be a, a good um, comeback story for this one, if it can do it. If it can do it, we'll see. Uh, Nicholas Wan says, love the content. Resident Evil 2 and 3 ask for over 12 gig on Macs. Have you considered using these games to test high VRAM usage? I have not, but only because I wasn't aware of that. We can look into it. Like I said, most of the time it's an allocation, not a usage, but we can, we can you do frame time plots to try and figure out, okay, is it really using 12 gig? Are we running out of memory on 10? Or is it just asking for that? So frame time plots are a really good way to show that. It'll get averaged out otherwise, in other words. Venlaw, I've had a Scythe. Why so many Scythe? I, I swear, like, Scythe, it's the company. I swear they plant people to do this. Uh, I've had a Scythe Kazuti, I don't know, running 24-7 on 35 watts since 2011 for my firewall, okay. And the 80 mil fan is only giving up now. Yeah, that sounds about right. Nine years for a cheap fan is, is kind of average, so not bad uh, for a uh, long run life on a firewall, though. Frank Rollo, shout out to your biggest fan, DCO, or DSEO, DCO, we're gonna go with. Well, shout out, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Tyler Tim. Received your toolkit and mouse pad, great quality. Try getting a, th oh yeah. Try getting a 3080 in Alaska. Not happening. Keep up the great work. Yeah, I guess, I don't know what kind of uh, local stores you have, but I'm not sure, yeah, the inventory is very limited in, in Canada from what I understand. Like we were talking to some people earlier about this. Um, not just in the chat, so I don't know. Alaska is kind of logistically difficult, so that's unfortunate. I guess you're kind of limited to online orders. F5 to the crap out of store.gamersnexus.net all morning to snag a pre-release secret 3090. Bigly let down. Settled for the anniversary tea instead. Appreciate the work you do, uh, big dog, yee yee. Okay, well thank you. <laughs> uh, the, the secret pre-release 3090, uh, it'll go up at some point, but I'm waiting for it to materialize myself. Nurex. Does HDMI versus DisplayPort matter at all? Uh, yes, for um, there's going to be bandwidth limitations depending on your your resolution and your refresh rate. So in and, and there's a a maximum cable length difference before you start getting degradation. So I guess in that context as well. Dixon Software Solutions uh, we're pretty close. We're like in a, this is a couple pages. Oh man. I'm doing my best to get to catch up to all of these. Wow, that ran. Did it decay? I want to read that super chat. One sec. Dixon software. I've been running two 1080 Ti since they came out. I missed the Ampere announcement, though. 
Did you happen to catch if Jensen gave me permission to upgrade? Yes, Jensen specifically said something like 10 ATI, or no, he said Pascal owners, now it's safe to upgrade or something like that. I, I still think the 10 ATI is a great GPU, so especially too for where it works. Like if you're happy with it, you know, I keep running it, but, um, but yes, Jensen definitely wants, Jensen wants people who own 3080s to upgrade to 3090s next week. Like Jensen's definitely happy for you to upgrade. <laughs> He's the one who says the more you buy, the more you save. Uh, okay, so scoring-wise, that, that is actually an increase. I thought it was a decay in score, but 12,250 is like 30 points higher than we were previously on this card. So unfortunately, that large memory overclock didn't do a ton for us. But uh, it is a definitely a good memory OC. We're just core limited on this GPU. There's not a lot I can do about it because uh, we're too power limited. The core can't go up because the power can't go up. So that's the unfortunate situation we're in with the gigabyte card. Why? No, we can't. We definitely can't do a 1000 megahertz offset on the core. On three gigahertz on a stock cooler. Uh, let's just give that a shot and see if that helps at all. I'm going to need to start winding this down. I just want to um, try and answer all these super chats. I don't like to leave people hanging on them. But like I said, please don't send any more that you want answered. Because I probably won't be answering them. Um, it's fair warning. So, Christian Logan, uh, worst to plug in when out of sight, HDMI or USB? 50 50 shot with USB, but one out of 100 with HDMI, am I right? You are right. Uh, yes. Also, I don't know. USB, I feel like you, you, it takes three times every time. It doesn't matter if you get it right the first time or not. Uh, Isogen, Buildzoid VRM analysis went soon. He's got the, the photography, so very soon. Anthony the Great. Good job, guys. Uh, who bid $10,000 on eBay to troll those bot scalpers? Hope they can never sell it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's even NVIDIA doesn't want people to scalp it because they want the card out there. Um, you know, they put out a statement talking about how they are doing what they can to intercept pre-orders that are from bots. And if anyone can detect bots, it's probably NVIDIA. They've, they've got quite a bit in AI. Uh, clandestine. <laughs> Clandestine Espionage says, uh, Precision X1, what are the paddles between target sliders and the link unlink button? Let's see. Target, oh, is it running? Uh, we'll look at that in a second. Um, Miran, uh, we see all these benchmarks, but will it run Call of Duty Warzone and what FPS? Seriously, we see all these benchmarks, but I never see anyone benchmark COD, any reason. So our approach to benchmarking is basically relative scaling. We want to give you a reliable set of numbers of uh, X percent increase over Y card. So the goal is if you have card X right now at home, let's say a 1080 Ti, and we produce numbers which suggest that on average at 4K, uh, 3080 will be on average 80 to 90 percent higher frame rate than a 1080 Ti, you can pretty easily uh, and mostly accurately take that data and extrapolate what your rough frame rate would be at your given settings. So at what FPS is always a rough question because it depends on where you test and what settings you test. Uh, really what you're chasing should be relative performance scaling. And hopefully if someone's benchmarked a similar card to what you have, you can extrapolate the difference. So for example, we tested a 1080, but not a 1070. So if you have a 1070, what you can do is look at some of our old benchmarks and go, okay, what's the average percent increase from a 1070 to a 1080? Then you can look at our review. What's the percent increase from a 1080 to a 3080? And now you have enough data to figure it out. So there's a little bit of work involved for the user, but that's the best way to get the data for everyone out there. It's like there's no good solution because otherwise we'd have to test thousands of cards. There was a, a big score reduction here. So unfortunately, this is a, a fantastic example of validating your clocks when you think that they're uh, stable because it ran and it looked good, but we dropped 200 points. Uh, that's a pretty big drop. So basically, I guess the, the lesson is always run tests before and after your overclocks. Make sure you're not making performance worse. That looks like about the end of where the Gigabyte card is. So we're going to stop there. Um, quick recap, and then I'm going to finish out the Super Chats. The Tough card. So uh, this one, first one we tested, does have a BIOS switch. We set it to performance mode. Let me put this where it can be filmed, maybe. A uh, BIOS switch is right there. So I think, did I just move it? No, it's still right. It's in performance mode. 
Uh, that was the higher power percentage BIOS. We um, ran those tests. That card did 11,845 points, full stock. Uh, keep in mind, all these numbers are with 100% fan target, so it's helping us out on temperatures. And um, 12,294 overclocked. The FTW3, I'll move that over into the shot right here, uh, was the best performer so far. And that's just because it had the highest power target. It's got a pretty big cooler, too. That, that may have helped, for sure. Um, so that one did 12,140 points. And you can just do a percent difference between these, just like I was talking about a second ago. I, I, uh, you do new minus old divided by old um, times 100. So 12,140 base, 12,460. I don't know, what is that, like 3% or something? Three, three high twos to threes. Uh, increase from an overclock. That was a 50 megahertz core offset, 500 mem. As a reminder, if the baseline's higher, uh, then 50 megahertz from a higher baseline might mean the same as 100 megahertz from a lower baseline, just as a reminder of that. And then this card, the Eagle, did a 100 megahertz offset, but the frequency wasn't higher to the previous point than the FTW3. And 900 megahertz mem, so really good memory. The, the FTW3 had the worst memory out of what we tested, although I need to double check that they haven't pre-overclocked the memory. If they have, then that would contribute to it. Uh, score for that was 11,777 stock and 12,250 overclocked. And then we need to do some extreme overclocking this weekend with LM2 to really get the, uh, the full picture. Um, some people are saying it has dual BIOS and a switch. Which one? The Gigabyte card? The Asus one does, and we tested that, and the EVGA one does, and we tested that on OC mode. Uh, it is not in normal mode, it's in OC. I don't see a switch, unless I'm overlooking it on Gigabyte. I don't think I see a dual BIOS. No, I, I really don't see a dual BIOS switch on this card. Uh, okay, well, I don't see one, so pretty sure it's not there, but maybe I'm, I don't know. I don't think I'm overlooking anything. Uh, okay, let me finish out these super chats. So, worst core, AU, finally got my large mod mat to Australia. Oh, long journey for it. Uh, why do so few SIs offer to overclock systems? Nobody here does it. I think it's probably because of the RMA issues where, like I, I was talking about this way earlier in the stream, but... It's possible that you have a, a stable overclock and then a year goes by, Cyberpunk or whatever, a new game comes out, and now it's not stable anymore because the game's doing something a little bit different than what you tested before. So they probably just don't want to deal with RMAs, is my guess. Uh, Bourbonana says, when will the mugs be back in stock? What's the difference between your toolkit and iFixits? I have the ProTech iFixit toolkit. Okay, good question. So mugs are on the way. We have uh, a batch of them coming in now, and they should be here in the next couple weeks, I think, maybe two weeks. Our toolkit and I fix it. So, I mean, they're both good toolkits, and uh, I also have iFixit Protect toolkits, and I use both of them. I use ours and theirs, depending on what the job is. Um, so ours, we specifically went with, and this is all on the store site, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn this into a big advertisement, but I'll just talk about some of the core differences. Um, so I personally like working with dedicated tools rather than bits for a few reasons. One is with bit drivers, with a higher torque application, you'll feel that bit shift a little bit, and you can start to, to apply some pressure that might strip the head. Um, but I just prefer this because I can grab it out of a, a bag or off the shelf, and it's already ready to use. Uh, that's just my personal. I, I built this toolkit for myself first, so that's why. Other big difference, we built these hex heads specifically for PC component disassembly, where we shaved down the, we specifically, this tool, the hex, is actually three factories involved to make this. So we shave down, grind down the outside of the hex head to our spec so that it can uh, fit on the back of a video card and clear small components like small caps that are close to the screws, like on the original FE20 series. Same for this one. So, and then we also flattened the end. Oh, sorry, this is an old toolkit. Let me grab the new one. This is Gen 1 from a year ago. Where's the new one? I think there's one back there, actually. That was from over a year ago, that one. That was probably one of the original samples. No one should be in here. So, there you go. Same tools, just uh, 
reworked the quality on some stuff to improve with what we learned. So that one, you can see it's flat on the end. And um, that was a change we did. I like how I fixed the toolkit too. It's just kind of different stuff. Uh, theirs has a little bit more of everything and ours is much more targeted and focused. So the driver is 100 millimeters on all of them. Driver handles 100 millimeters on all of them. Good grip, good, good angle for uh, PCU specifically where you're often working like this in a computer. And um, we've also, uh, so everything's pre-magnetized. We're using a CRV material for everything except for the hex heads. The hex heads are an A3 steel because of how we grind them down that was needed. The CRV is for durability, endurance, and uh, the hex heads are not pre-magnetized, which is also by design because you don't want, I've had this happen on GPUs where the screw gets like sucked into the hex head and stuck. So our goal was like high quality tools that'll last for uh, as long as you need them, basically, um, and uh, and focusing on on targeted tools. So that was kind of the the design philosophy for that. So I like them both. Uh, I think the the pro pro tool tool gets good too. Okay, um, Tyler Tim just got the Gamers Access Maps Mat and Toolkit. Love it. Uh, try ordering a 3080. Oh yeah, while well, living in Alaska, saw that one earlier. Okay, Dave Leviathan Prim says, look forward to the Alan 2 stream with Slacker Joe. As Joe said, if you're not first, you're last. I'm pretty sure that's objectively false, but I'm not going to argue with Joe if you've seen him. So we're, I'll agree with him. Uh, everything RC. Can I get the FTW3 you overclocked, please? I don't, I don't know if it's even that good. I mean, I was pretty happy with the results on the FTW3 versus the others, but... Um, we need a larger sample size to know like what's the silicon quality gradient. Uh, that said, if you can't buy it at all, then you know that's a different problem entirely. Uh, Sage and CC, fix the damn curtain rod. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's yeah, we could do that later. Uh, Josh White, any kind of overclock that the and that FTW3 will be in the top ten Port Royal single cart. Cool. I haven't actually looked yet, but uh, I would be happy to start doing some competitive clocking again. So we'll go for a number one. We'll try for a world record this weekend um, with liquid nitrogen. Lost Mind. Set that FTW3 on fire. That's the card I'm hunting. Uh, even with the Taylor Swift lipstick on it, it's mine, says Lost Mind. Yeah, well, they are going to... They are going to offer options for that. Aaron Red, uh, I bet RTX voice could filter out that noise. You're probably right. Doc Vision, strap one of those rubber chickens onto the vent valve. <laughs> like the ones that make that screaming noise when that you s squeeze it. The, uh, I don't know if we want that on stream. Uh, Centurion, liquid nitrogen magic tricks and tanks exploding is as engaging as RTX 3080 overclocking. Yeah, they've been loud today. Uh, we're almost caught up to the end of the Super Chats, and then we'll, we'll call it. Uh, Louis Rene uh, says, your analysis and your comparison methodology is very good. Thank you. We, we worked hard on it for this generation. We have a video if, if, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it. Have you considered developing something like a GN Bench to analyze uh, GPUs and CPUs, video games, what everyone uses, but is it the best, best method now? Uh, I guess you mean maybe like a software solution. It's tough. You can definitely build custom software for benchmarking, but you run the risk of being maybe not real world anymore. Um, and so even if it scales similarly, people are still going to be like, well, like the person asking about Warzone earlier, where yes, you can do the math and figure it all out. But a lot of the time people are just like, okay, uh, but how does it perform in this game? So you always run into that problem of people want real world, and that's totally valid. Uh, Don Fever says, Tech Jesus doesn't walk on water, he walks on LN2. That would be exceptionally painful. Uh, the Flacker 99, Flack, it's called percussive maintenance. Oh, that was when I was hitting it with a hammer earlier. Uh, Metzli 666, nice. Hi, my current case, Fantax MATX, won't fit most 3080s. Any recommendations for a new case with dual radiator support, 360? CPU 240 uh, GPU. I don't have radiator support size off the top of my head, but I can still point you in the right direction, then you'll have to verify. Uh, if you like Fantax, which you say you're using now, then look up the P500A, uh, the P400A for a bit cheaper, but P500A should fit those larger radiators. That's a really good case. Airflow is extremely good. It'll fit the cards. Um, Leon Leo 11 Dynamic will definitely fit those radiators and will fit the card, I th I'm pretty sure, pretty confident. Uh, there's no structure on the front of the case. And then, and it's a little bit smaller. It's wider, though. 
and then maybe like a TD 500 or something. Uh, Reforms Cougar 6. When will the 3080 restock? Good question. Uh, I spoke with AIB partners earlier. They told me every few days they're getting more stock for the 30 series. So specifically when, what time, I don't know. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd check at like midnight Eastern or Pacific, depending on the website, if you're in the U.S. for the sites. And I'd probably check at like 9 a.m. Eastern and Pacific um, if you're in the U.S. But every few days is the answer. It's just it might not be a lot for a while. Victor S. Want to buy Gamers Nexus branded percussive maintenance hammer? Please make this happen. Uh, we can we can make a CPU repair tool, aka a hammer. Yes, uh, maybe someday. Matlock Tech, fledgling YouTuber here. Had a 3080 for review, but my supplier, a uh, big name boutique builder near me, received so few cards they couldn't deliver. Do you think this is supply issues or typical? I think from what I understand now, it's typical. Well, it's typical supply, but it's higher demand. Is the problem right now? We have a video coming up on that. Um, I know that some of the SIs were close to a thousand units for the GPUs. There's a net, and uh, that's kind of that's pretty high allocation. So um, I think it's just too high demand. James and good luck by the way with the with YouTube. James Morris, I miss this type of content. I'll be using liquid nitrogen on Halloween only. Well, if you have any left after that, I guess do some overclocking. Uh, so we're at 8.41 in the Super Chats, and I'm trying to catch up to 9.22, getting there. Thank you for, uh, for bearing with me here. So let's see. Zentix, MSI Afterburner or Precision X1, what's better? I like them both. Like I said earlier, um, I like using Precision X1 because I'm used to it. Interface is easy for me to use, and I know the bugs of this one better than I know the bugs of Afterburner. That's an important part to overclocking. So uh, they're both fine, though. Sharky, do you think there are, gr I will say this, Afterburner has a few more non-overclocking tools, so that's maybe an advantage. Do you think there are greater or fewer than 1000 RTX 3080 sold today? Uh, far greater, like way, way higher than that. But um, yeah, definitely more than that. Adam Jackson, just bought your mat and shirt, hopefully building with uh, my kid, his first computer for me and him after all the smoke settles in about two to three months. And I see some of your reviews on the AMD 4K series and on Big Navi. That will be a, yeah, there's, the next two to three months are going to be crazy for product launches. Um, so that sounds like a, a very, again, responsible approach to me. You'll see everything at that point. Uh, and um, I think AMD 4K will probably be the one I'm most interested in covering because new Zen architecture should be kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, enjoy enjoy the, the first build with your kid. Um, Martin... Martijn Holland uh, says, greetings from the Netherlands. Greetings. Uh, G is for gaming. One dollar, no message. Uh, Burbanana says, can we ask Jacob who decided on the red trimmer accents? Ask him on Twitter. Uh, Kyle Knight, what CPU is this? You probably won't answer. Uh, what CPU is this? This is a 10700K. Good question. It's overclocked 5.1. Something about a chainsaw gaming. Do you plan to have a special, do you have to have a special license to have Alan 2? Um, you, no, you have to... Uh, it depends on the supplier. You have to talk to the supplier and sign forms and waivers. And um, well, I don't know. I can't speak to every region, but that's how it is here. And uh, there's some other code stuff, but um, special license in the U.S. or at least where we are now. Uh, maybe in different countries. So look into that, obviously. Cloud one two three four eight. Uh, do you think the thirty ninety AIBs will pull further ahead? than the FE compared to the 3080 series in regard to overclocking and power limit. I could see it go either way. I could see the 3090 cards be more restricted because they're going to be higher power natively, so there might be less overclocking headroom than with the lower tier cards. I have a feeling the 3070 will have a lot of OC headroom if, uh, if you can get a good VBIOS for it. Uh, it's Papa CJ says, Will there be an RTX 3080 Ti, and will you be benchmarking some juicy 3090s in SLI? I think there might be a 3080 Ti. I don't have any information on that that's official, but there's room for it. And we probably will be. Uh, Andrew Fife, how hopeful are you for Big Navi? I'm trying to figure out what card to get for 144144. I mean, I have a feeling it'll probably be able to do that. Will it be better or better value? I don't know, but it should be able to do that. They're pretty close already. Um, hopeful, I, I try not to 
hold any hopes one way or the other for a product before it comes out. VC Jester, uh, Steve's Xbox destruction video is the best stuff, the best of his early stuff. It is something. <laughs> Nerd Dad, have you heard about anything about shortages being due to some cards being recalled? I need to be Bios Flash. I have not. Um, I am aware of cards that might get a different production VBIOS, but they haven't shipped to market yet. I'm not aware of any that have shipped to market and are being pulled back. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not happened, it's just they haven't told me if it has. K on Postal, so we're almost through, let's see, we've got maybe two pages of these, I think. No, no, it's worse than that. <laughs> uh, it's so tough, like, I saw, I caught a Lewis Rossman stream the other night and he was talking about this too, where like, we really want to answer all the super chats, but there there does have to be a, a cap at some point. We've done all the content now. Like, content's done. I'm just trying to get through these, and we obviously hugely appreciate the support. It does fund all this stuff. Um, I hate leaving questions hanging, but we get kind of stuck. So uh, let me try and get through them, though. Kagon Postal says, upgrading from a 1080 Ti worth the extra $200 for 3080, in your opinion, used for gaming, but I geek out with other stuff as well. 3950X and 32 gigs. Worth the extra 200. Uh, maybe meaning like if you, can you sell it for that much? Um, well, if it's really only 200, then yes, I think so. I, I think if you do stuff other than just gaming, I would say that's worth it. If you have to pay $700, maybe not. Uh, Jose Perez, and I only say that because it depends on what you need. Like 700 is not bad, 90% better at 4K in a lot of cases, but you know, if you're still happy with it, then just keep the 1080 Ti. Uh, Jose says, price performance, what 3080 card do you believe is the best bang for your buck? 3080 FE, question mark. Um, well, price performance, you're always going to get best towards the $700, the MSRP range. Uh, there will be a, a diminishing return as you increase, but you're going to have quality of life improvements. So it's like less about FPS increases at that point. It's more about can you run the cooler, quieter, is there zero fan mode? Um, do you get the same performance at a given noise level? Stuff like that. Overclocking headroom. Kinpin, is that the Kinpin? I think it might be. That message from so long ago, I doubt he's, I doubt he's still listening. Kinpin says, since 666, I think it's the real Kinpin. $6.66, says Steve versus J, question uh, mark. Vince, if you're still watching, get those KP cards out to us and we'll do it. Uh, Thomas Chandler. Hey, Steve, from all of us nerds here on Norfolk, Norfolk Naval Base, you rock. Thank you. Uh, thanks for all your content. Can't wait to see what you have in store in the near AMD and NVIDIA future. Uh, yes, I am greatly looking forward to benchmarking the rest of the cards. There's, it's crazy generation right now. Um, let's see. Damien Robles, Robles, also sent 666. It's a trend. Uh, you're crazy. The channel has grown to 1 million. Congrats. Is it worth to upgrade to a 1700X, primarily used for gaming and photo editing paired with 2070 Super? I'm not sure what you're on right now, but if you can get a 1700X for cheap these days and you already have the motherboard and the RAM and everything else, how do I say cheap? I mean, I don't know, maybe like a hundred bucks or something. Um, then yes, if you're upgrading from like maybe an R3 or an R5 that generation, but if you're upgrading from like a 1700, then no. Or a high-end R5, then probably no. Haven Plays. Jacob has just confirmed a 420-watt FTW3 BIOS power limit on Twitter. Well, I think we have that BIOS since he's now officially confirmed it, but I'm not going to use it today. We'll use that this weekend. Why do you think the graphics card and RAM are primarily measured in megahertz instead of gigahertz like CPUs from SC videos? Uh, probably just convention. I think the the numbers are a little lower on average. Um, good question on the memory though. That could probably be done in gigahertz. I think it's probably just convention. Also, memory gets screwy because actual versus effective clock. Uh, Nightburn, please make a Discord. We have one for Patreon. patreoncom slash New 505 gaming. I3 from 2010 running at 200% over. I guess overclocked. Is it any good? Uh, <laughs> That's not much information for me to go off of. Um, I don't know what it's 200% over. Uh, maybe? <laughs> Depends. Epic Jack. Hi, when will benchmarks be out for 3090? Next week when it comes out. Uh, Rabbit, zero by 21. I'm water cooling my 3080 and I can't fit the three by eight cards in my case. 
Will it matter uh, OC-wise which 2x8 pin cards I go with? Founders Edition for reference, Asus, oh, Founders Edition, reference, Asus Tough, etc. Um, yes, it will matter. So the reason it will matter, every time, it's so loud. It's just rude. That's uh, off gas and give it a second, it'll stop. <laughs> That's what the liquid nitrogen tank thinks of your question. You're saying, I want to water cool my 3080. And the liquid nitrogen tanks over here at like, we really going to talk about water cooling right now? You're going to disrespect me like that? <laughs> so, um, someone's like, no more super chats. Super chats five seconds later. Yeah, well, we're doing them through 922, like I said. Uh, so, where was the question? That was so loud. Uh, OC wise, yes, it will matter because the power limits that the BIOS configures. Um, that's, that's mostly it. I guess the VRM quality, maybe. But if they're all reference boards, they should be pretty similar. Uh, they can still change the, the MOSFETs, though. So yes, but mostly for overclocking. Matt Cronin, uh, what kind of car do you drive? Uh, an old one. Uh, Bart the Tree Guy, would upgrading from 2060 be worth if I'm running 10700K at 5.1? I really only got it as a stopgap for when my 970 died but it's not bad. Um, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, a 2060, you're, you're probably gonna be limited on that 10700K, so there's room to improve, if that's what you want. Uh, Exorios, Sterbauer sort of complained about having little time with the card before embargo lifted. Did you get the cards weeks in advance? I don't remember exactly when we got them. I wanna say like two weeks. We had plenty of time, uh, but it depends on the region here. That's why Nvidia pushed the embargo back two days, because some regions got them late. James Morris. Uh, your marketing knew that a lot of us have an unexpected $700 in our accounts tonight. Uh, I, maybe, I think maybe you're, maybe that was replying, I don't know, maybe that was replying to Jacob when he was on the phone. Uh, I guess it's talking about how, because no one can get the cards. So we're at 857 right now. I was trying to get to 922. Oh man, that's... I'm trying hard to get through them efficiently and also answer them, and sometimes it's not possible to do both. Uh, like, answer them well, I mean. Um, okay, let's do... Any idea when it will be restocked uh, from Crystal Knight? Yes, every couple days. Um, uh, difficult nerd. I bought 2080 Super Strix near launch, very happy with it, but my friends think I should upgrade to a 3080 because I have AMD 3900X. Can I safely skip the 30 series? Primary game is Grand Theft Horse. Um, is that Red Dead? Is that the reference? So in Red Dead 2, you will have a bit of an uplift with the 3080. If you're unhappy with your frame rate, then there's room to uplift. But a 2080 Super Strix, especially, is still a good card. And I mean, I would skip a generation. When, when I like built computers regularly for myself, I would always skip a generation at least. So uh, yes, I think you can safely skip a generation. Uh, AMD is going to be bound at some point anyway, especially that game. So uh, Vipohe says, I tried to buy a, a 3080 today, but couldn't. So instead I bought a better monitor and a good chair for the same price. I'll stick with a 2080. Again, yeah, 2080 is completely fine. It's not that old. Uh, a chair upgrade and a monitor sounds like worthwhile expense to me. Alexander Marks, is a bad idea to stack two by 2.9 <laughs> slot cards, two 3090s? Probably. They're going to be awfully close to each other. Uh, thermals are, are going to be a concern. You have your water cool them, cool, and if not, then make sure there's some high pressure fans in the front. So you probably want like 120s, 140s that'll push air a little bit faster to try and get it in between the cards. You're, you're, you want to avoid a power supply shroud as well. Ian Holbert's thoughts, will the next series be 3180 or 4080? I'm going to guess 40 based on the current naming convention. Not sure, though. Uh, I am an Yemen. Uh, good vibes to you all from Brazil. Keep up the good work, GM. Love your content. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, always cool to see people from all over the world. RJ Bass, or Bass. Steve, love your work. Keep it up. Thank you. Federico Madden, thoughts on the report by by Moore's Law is dead on alleged shenanigans behind the 3080 launch. I'm not aware of it. I haven't seen any of the content. I have no thoughts on it. Uh, but I will also say I, 
like shenanigans. I don't really know what that means when you talk about releasing a product. So yeah, I don't really have any feedback, sorry. I, I think if it's about like inventory, then the demand is high. And it's extremely high because of human malware. Where, so think about it this way. In March and April, those are the dead times of the year for selling normally. This year, they were doing volume equivalent to November and December. Christmas volume all summer. And the 20 series, which is end of life uh, and had poor sales at start, should have been dipping to eventually asymptote off to nothing. But it actually increased in sales once lockdown started. So we're kind of in unprecedented territory where people were, were buying old product, uh, approaching EOL because they needed a computer for the work they now had to do at home. Um, so that's very abnormal, which means also once 20 started going EOL, there's a lot of pent up demand where people are maybe more on the need camp than the want camp. And uh, so you have a lot of people trying to buy out. I don't know if that answers the question, but I'm up not really, I don't, I haven't followed any media from anyone else the last few days. We've been focused on our own stuff. Uh, Scott Shion says, sent a sticker that says, how's it going? Pretty well, thank you. Uh, Boom says, what do you reckon is the best or going to be the best bang for the buck option to upgrade to from an RX 588 gig? No real budget, just curious about it in general. Best bang for the buck option is probably going to be used, especially right now with people freaking out. Like maybe before the reviews went up would have been better. But um, I would say used if you can do it, if you feel comfortable with, you know, there's a little bit of risk, but uh, if you can get one that's buyer protected, it might be worth trying. And um, maybe like a, a 20 series or a 10 series even used if you can. Um, you'd have to buy higher up the stack for that to be worth it though in 10. Robert Russell, 373080 for a 9900K, Asus Strix, a Z390E Gaming. I don't know because I haven't tested a 3070. We don't have one yet. Dylan McDonald, 2060 Super FE stock cooler. What would be your suggested OC? So the best way to do an OC, I can't give you a number. Like it's not, there's not really a good way to just be like, here's the numbers, copy, paste them with overclocking because silicon quality varies so much. What you should do is what we did here today and kind of launch a benchmark, um, run it baseline, write down the numbers, and then increase your core clocks. I would start at like 50 megahertz offset I go to 70, go to 90, increase it by like 20 each time until it crashes, I dial it back by 10 or 20, and then run that for like an hour burn in. And that's how I would determine the overclock. Okay, how close are we to 9.22? We are several pages. Um, I might have to cut it at some point soon. Let's see. I might start skipping repeat questions. So they, uh, Daniel Short says they have for months known they are launching this and around the world products are listed as not arriving for four weeks. Is a $700 card a myth? Meanwhile, Nvidia gets to look at like the good guy. I don't know, like people say this every single launch. So I, like, I've seen this so much at this point. Uh, the PS5 is the same thing. Like they're way past allocation on that too. So not defending NVIDIA, I'm just saying like, I don't know that I would, I would look into it as like some sort of evil marketing. I think this is just the product sold out and it's as simple as that. Uh, they're still gonna have restocks through November pretty heavily. Uh, Joshua Horton, and, and I'll, I'll throw this in there too from our own experience. Um, the new toolkits, when we were making those, we were out of stock on the toolkits for a year and I knew for a year that we were going to restock them. But when we got them in, we still sold out in two days. And that's because we were predict, and that, I mean, I know it's not like 30 seconds like NVIDIA, but to look at the size difference, right? Um, so I knew that uh, we, were, we were going to restock them, but I didn't have a great way to predict the demand, and so we underordered. So, uh, like, I, I kind of understand it, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, Joshua Horton. Do you think a Ryzen 7 3800X is good enough for a 3080? Uh, you might be a little bit bound on lower resolutions, but at 4K you're fine. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Adam Yeager, since the thing, I've stopped cutting my hair and it's longer than ever. What shampoo and conditioner do you use? Uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. 
<laughs> Zaj says, do you think we should be worried that some reviewers got cards with coil wine? Is it a sign of underlying manufacturing issues? No, it's not. Um, it's the coil inside of the inductor vibrating and whining and making a noise. So ours, like you'll hear coil wine, especially at high frame rates and like Rainbow Six Siege, for example, in our testing, you could hear that. Not something I really talked about because um, it wasn't that, that prominent. I don't think you'd hear it outside of a case. Uh, so should you be worried? I mean, a lot of the partner models try to fix that problem, but even they have the issue. It's pretty prevalent. Uh, Michael Mace is at 9.08 p.m. Will you bench and OC for VR in future years? No, not, no current plans for that. We did that years ago. It's a huge amount of work. Um, space requirements an issue, too. Let's see. I have a 6700K. Will I be bottlenecked? Uh, I think is basically the question. Uh, at lower resolutions, yes. Okay. Uh, just looking for questions that I maybe haven't answered yet. Let's see. Mac Smith is looking for a monitor recommendation. Uh, I don't have monitor recommendations at all. I don't pay attention to the market. I don't know any of the SKUs. I don't do any benchmarks. Sorry, I, I have no good monitor recommendations. Our memory supplier is the same for all the cards you've tested. I don't know. I haven't opened these three yet. Good question. But it should be. It should all be Micron as far as I'm aware. Uh, Wizard Earl. Steve, could, Wizard IRL, how about that? Uh, Steve, could you do a video showcasing the physical toughness of the tough cards? Where is it? Uh, we need one of those, like, like one of those Tesla RC cards for, not RC cars. What do you call this? The little, the cars for kids to drive around. That's what we need, and we need to run this over with it uh, and see how it does, I think. Because it's got the tire tracks on there. So surely that must mean it's truly tough. I, I don't think it would, yeah, I don't know if tough is, uh, that's overreaching a little bit. Uh, saucer, which board smells the best? Uh, well, when they're running, they all have that electrical hot component smell. I don't know if that helps. Uh, Evil Bob, 2200. Will you guys be testing hybrids and comparing their performance to the air versions? Yes, we will be. I don't know if we'll be testing the Ice Wolf, though, to answer that question. Probably not. Uh, Mystic, great content as usual. Thank you very much. We're in the last stretch here, last couple. Um, Tim B, have learned a, wa a lot watching your channel recently. Thanks for letting us know. Glad you learned something. Um, I was really happy with this stream, like, for the content side of it. I know we're just, we're, I've, like, we're burning through the uh, Super Chats now. I don't like to leave people hanging. Um, it's getting more difficult as the channel grows, obviously, but, uh, but for the first, like, more than half the stream where we're doing overclocking, I think there was some good information in there people might not have known. Hopefully it helped. Maybe you learned something. Um, and some of these questions, too, have been pretty good. Let's see. Liberty Live says, hi, I love your content reviews. Could you tell me which Model 3080 had better temperature? Good luck <laughs> to everyone purchasing them. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I have not run these through reviews yet. I said that earlier in the content, but it was quite a while ago. Um, once we review them, you'll see the temperature numbers. Apocalypse, $50. Wow, thank you. Tubes down and custom loops on rads, question mark. Uh, tubes down in custom loops on rads. It doesn't really matter in a custom loop, as long as the pump is not at the top of the loop. Strix 3090 release date, uncertain, but the 3080 is probably in... Uh, in October. CP bottleneck with 3950X on Zen 3 or equivalent for low resolutions, yes. 4K, not too much. Uh, David, can you shout out my buddy Vince? He's a huge fan and a great friend, and I look up to him. Well, Vince, your friend David, uh, thinks very highly of you. And shout out to, to Vince. I'm assuming that this is not Vince sharing a name with Kane, or it's Vince sharing a name with Kanebin, but not literally Kanebin himself. Uh, it burns when internet protocol has returned. Sliding in just before the cutoff for the Super Chats tonight. Uh, it burns when IP says, finally catch a stream, always good stuff. See, with a name like it burns when internet protocol, I'm not sure what exactly you mean when you say catching a stream, but hopefully it is not one that burns. Uh, Chris J.J. Wilson, no message, thank you. At Hotez, no, don't send Super Chats. I see it coming in. I've got a message on the screen. Uh... Jonathan Tapia says, do you think I can run a 3090 with my current setup? And describes it. 
750 watts. I don't know. I, I haven't tested a 3090, so we'll, power might be a concern. We'll see. Um, Atoda's greetings with 1 million, 50K since as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, I did notice that. Like the algorithm. Well, thank you. Uh, William Pengeli, any chance you'll do thermal test of founder's edition vertical mount? Maybe. Uh, let's see. Hayden Wilhelm, $50. You're flipping awesome. Dude, thank you. Uh, this channel is the best play, is the place for uh, completely objective reviews and facts on all things computer. Hearing you trash companies for being trashy is awesome. I, I, yeah, I wish they wouldn't, but sometimes companies do what they gotta do, I guess. Uh, kept, keep, kept. A finished review site tested RAM times the 3080. It cooled RAM compared to AIB and 2080 Ti cards. Case was a stock. Uh, oh, you're talking about RAM, not video memory. Um, yeah, I mean a C700P. I'm not surprised that it would it would perform like that. Okay, we're in the last. We're at the 922 range. It's done after this. Uh, so we've got three here. So I'm sorry if I don't get yours. Like we've had the message on the screen to to try and say. Um, <laughs> to, I see Sergeant Zeta. I see Zeta in chat saying, "Seize the super chats." Uh, we're going to cut it off here. I apologize sincerely if I don't get to your question. We did put a note on the screen to try and tell people. Uh, we've been here for a couple hours now just like finalizing the Super Chats if you total up everything in the stream. Had a lot of good overclocking and fun content. Learned a lot about these three cards. But I do have to cut this off at some point so I can go back to reviewing them. So I apologize if I don't get to it. Uh, it is not, not my intention to, to snub you over it. Okay. Uh, Kagon Postal says, is the 3080 the right card for 1440p? 144 hertz gaming. Uh, currently rocking a 1080 Ti. It's not quite there. I think so. Uh, we the, the frame rate looks right. Um, some games, Red Dead 2, it was kind of cutting it close. Top of my head, I think it was in the, the 140, 150 range. Callan Johnstone, are there any BIOS settings that need to be configured before performing GPU overclocking? Not really. Um, other than whatever you want to do with the CPU, but not really for the GPU. Uh, VBIOS, maybe you could flash a better one. Last one, Nyqu Nyquistro, fifty or five dollars. Just got here. Have you messed with the Asus Strix card yet? No, we don't have that one. So, I'll answer this question while recapping the content for people who want a quick recap. Scores: the FTW3 scored the best for quick overclocking. As a reminder, this is not a review. Uh, I am not telling you which cards I think are the best right now because there's so much more involved in a review. It's not even funny. I'm gonna have to do. Uh, thermal test acoustics, thermal like uh, RPM thermal response, and teardowns, and then memory and MOSFET temperatures. So I don't know what's like the best yet. But in terms of pure overclocking tonight, the FTW3 scored the highest, had the highest power t power target, and I was pretty happy and impressed with its performance relative to the others. The Tuft did the second best, I think, and then the yeah, and then the Gigabyte Eagle was kind of close to the Tuft, but. Lacking the power slider really hurts the Eagle and its ability to push harder. Super good memory on our card. That's a bin thing. Uh, it doesn't mean that the card's always going to be like that. But it, that's why it's unfortunate, too, that the core was kind of weak on it. So sometimes, I mean, like Vince Kingpin talks about how he'll have people, like, desolder good GPUs and add them onto boards with good memory to get the best of both. But that's where we stood on those. Uh, we'll be back with reviews to really fully discuss them. Final scores, 11845 stock, full stock for the top. 12294 final scoring. We had a, a 90 megahertz core offset, keeping in mind that offset is an offset, not an absolute. 60 me me megahertz memory offset and 12294 final score. FTW3 was 12140 baseline, so the highest baseline. And 12460 overclock, uh, 50 offset core, 500 mem, kind of weak mem. Eagle was 11777 score, and then with a 100 megahertz uh, core offset and 900 megahertz memory offset, we did 12250. So that'll be it for all the results. Thank you again for watching. Thanks for all the, the support, uh, especially after the last couple weeks benchmarking these cards. I love it, but it has been the most exhausting uh, work week I think I've done in, in a very long time. So uh, yeah, we appreciate the help. And that's going to be it for now. Check back for the reviews as they go up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.